I'll have to do your thing again. They wouldn't have heard anything. It would have just been white noise. Oh, well. oh. Sorry about that, Peter. Didn't have his sound turned on. <laughs> and if it's not turned on, it just destroys. It does, yeah. That, um, let me double check the sound now. But hi, guys. <laughs> now I can say hi. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's better now. <laughs> so I don't think anyone heard me say hello to you all before, but hi. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Peter's making food. I've got his recipe in the description. And if you guys have questions, please leave them in the chat box. Let me check the. Let me flick it over to Peter. Peter's making food. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's better now. That's better now. So everyone yeah. who didn't hear it before, I'm making chili con carne. Yes. 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 So at the moment, until anybody asks a question, I'll yeah. have to narrate myself. <laughs> so at the moment, <laughs> I'm de-seeding dried chilies and... Beck should have a list of all the chilies I use. I do, it's in the description. <laughs> it's in the description. They are pa Pasilla chilies. How many? Uh, two. Four Arbol chilies. Four Chipotle chilies. Three gua, 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 Guajillo? I don't know. Um, Guajillos? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm very <laughs> Sorry about the dogs barking. And? And ancho chilies. Wasn't there habaneros? No, chipotles. Oh, chipotles, that's yeah. right, sorry. I said that. So you're cool. de-seeding them? I'm de-seeding them and taking the stems from the outside and the inside, um, mainly because the flavours are in the skin, the heat is in the seeds, and you're not guaranteed to control the heat. If we should don't know how hot it's going to be. They vary a little bit, so it's better off to take the seeds out and then add the heat in separately by either putting chili powder or something like that in. Well, that's what I prefer to do. Such a chef. Such, such a chef. <laughs> so, no questions yet? No. Nobody wants to talk to us. Kev just said he can't stop saying cool, cool, cool when he's shooting and he doesn't know where he picked that one up from, Walls. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard, but at the end of the day, it's just important that you're making noise. We did a thing with a model the other day and I said something stupid and she said she heard it but it was just this drone happening <laughs> so it didn't really matter what I was saying it was just that there just was noise. noise yeah it's a bit awkward if like the photographer doesn't say anything it's kind of awkward for the model like you kind of like is this good is this bad and it's better to just to say normally something encouraging cool is good because it's a neutral word stuff like yeah, babe. Yeah, please no. <laughs> <laughs> so some models do, it's, you, you'll learn pretty quick based on the model you're working with. I know that one of the models I work with does want to hear gorgeous, beautiful, that's really yeah, pretty. It pumps her up. It pumps her up. But then there's other models that no, it doesn't. So you just got to work. Yeah, you find out which. You find out what works with the models. Rara always liked sort of more the pretty comments that would yeah. get her whereas cool 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 did nothing for her <laughs> and then Anne was just shut up and shoot <laughs> yeah, <I remember> <laughs> um, do -do. Do -do. Do -do. I'm just reading sorry um. all right so for the love of music and people says they're wondering what they're going to tell people that are 100% convinced that you must use a light meter because they're going to follow your advice and use their eyes, but they're always going to be people. They are. You just, it doesn't really matter. You just do what you want to do. And if someone asks you, it's, you can just... Well, it's a little bit like if you know what you're going to answer is going to upset them, answer it the way they want you to answer and not go through the, the hassles of upsetting. But... Um, Light meters were from the days of film. Right. So they were so people could check their exposures. Yeah. And that was the whole thing. They also used to use Polaroid for that too. So even though they'd light meter it and do all, and have all their numbers written out, it was because they couldn't trial an error. That because would come with digital today. Yeah, well, you can trial an error on the camera today and get exactly what you want. 
Whereas in those days, you'd trial and error and get roughly what you want. Mm. Then you had the exposing of the negative and the exposing of your positive. So you then had another two levels of exposure. So in the old days, you were restricted to about, uh, say in trannies, I think it was about seven stops. Mm. And then you had up to another seven to seven plus stops that you could uh, work in the dark room on it. And then you could still then do your dodging and burning in the dark room as well. Well, digital started off at seven stops and you couldn't do anything in the dark room. But the whole idea of the digital is to be able to shoot, have a look. It's a visual thing. It's not a number thing. Who cares what the numbers say? <laughs> as as visually, it, it doesn't look good. <laughs> the numbers might say you are the best photographer in the world. But, but if, the, nice. if it looks like crap, it looks like crap. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I... I think the problem is, is there is different types of photography. So you do have your technical photography, um, archival photography. So if you're working in things like museums and galleries, archiving stuff to get it perfectly replicated, some of the architectural photography, uh, some still life and product photography really has to be technical. Yeah. But what I do is I call art and mm. I keep telling people there is no rule in art and there's no critiquing in art because nobody can critique an artist's work because nobody else has the eyes of the artist who created it. What is in the eye of the beholder? The whole of the beholder, the eye, whole of the eye. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, it's, I find it really funny when artists, you will... People who say they're an artist, but all they want to do is give their opinion about everybody else's art. And then you look at they're a critic. Well, then you look at their own work. That's if they let you see it. Most of them don't even let you see what they make. Yeah. But when you do look at it, you think this is just boring. And it's because they're lighting by numbers. They're not lighting by emotions or feelings. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yes. Okay. Some of the greats that in all different areas like music and cinematography and photography, things like that. Um, the Tarantino thing I listened to the other day was amazing. It was sort of like, gee, I'm a trained actor. Mm. And on his, what the, one of the first movies with Reservoir Dogs, he goes, everybody in this room knows more about making movies than I do. Yeah. But I know what I want it to look like. So that's... That's that. That's that. <laughs> Mark says he would love to see more about editing of black and white images. Yeah, that's we can do that. We um, on our we don't do lots on this, but we do a bit of editing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can definitely do more. We did one on the YouTube, but we just found that the views are really low, so I just yeah. gathered the people on YouTube aren't interested in the Watch editing it. side yeah. of things. But if people want to see it, we but can. I've got no problems with I. I edit about 20 hours a week, so it's really easy for me just to get the just screenflow recording. It's not like a hard thing to do. And then just talk your and way And just through talk it. my way through it. But uh, I still, again, oh, is I so still... Lots of seeds in that one. <laughs> yeah, but this isn't really a hot chilli. Oh. Um, a, a lot of the things I really feel it's important is your own journey to learn your own editing. Like, there's certain things like tricks to make your editing quicker but when it comes down to styles of editing and things like that i think it's can be really bad sometimes to watch too much of one person mm. um because i look at my old editing and go just think what planet was i on i love yeah. i love your editing around 2015. oh yeah because that was on what that was another planet i was working with all the hair and makeup artists then it's, but like all it's, the plastic fantastics I love it. can you remove <laughs> any sign that she's a human yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you can. I, there's a trick that I found in ACR. I can actually do it for you in ACR, mm. like really quickly. It's nice. It looks terrible. No. Uh, HKP has asked if you wouldn't have become a photographer, could you have imagined becoming a chef? Nah. Why not? Nah. I kind of love this. And what? when you see the working chefs, there's no oh, love. You just like cooking, like I yeah, it's a, and it's only something I've started doing in the last four years. And it's I do love food. I you can tell by my body shape. Um, 
I thought that's because you like alcohol. <laughs> oh, food and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I love putting things into my belly. Um, but with the problem was is <clears throat> that you start, like I love street food, but it's hard to, uh, it's when you travel, you get the, the chance to taste all those foods. But when you're stuck in Melbourne, you don't. No. <laughs> but a lot of the times is the food that sort of really, really got me going was very expensive restaurants. And I, even though it was all the little tricks they did to bring out the secret flavours or the different, you know, the miss, the yin yanging with herbs and spices to get these flavours that really worked nice. But then I found that they were overpriced for what you're actually getting in the end. Mm. And so many times I'd go to a restaurant and just think, yeah, that wasn't worth that. Yeah. And then once I started doing a bit of cooking, it was only because so I wanted to start doing some stuff like barbecue. So I love American barbecue ribs and stuff like that. But I got more into it and I'm really interested in going to restaurants when we travel again. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not interested at all. I know all the Melbourne restaurants are struggling to survive. I'm really not interested in going out because I'm really enjoying cooking to my palate. Your palate. My palate. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, pa I think the name is pa Pavel. I uh, would like you to talk uh, about commercial work and with magazine companies that you're working <laughs> with. Which magazines and clients do you work for? Magazines, yeah. There's a... Magazines is like uh, film photography. <laughs> uh, the magazines are hard. There's just, there's no money in it. And I was going to do something soon on the whole magazine thing. I've noticed there's quite a few magazines now that um, you have to pay to get on oh, yeah. in the magazine. And even worse, if you want the cover, you to yeah, you've got to pay fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000. You can have the cover of Hustler Australia or whatever. Do we know that for certain though? Yes. Oh. I thought yes, it was going off. I don't, don't, don't know if it's in every country, but it's in a, definitely in a few. So where they can't, advertisers aren't advertising, and all you've got to do is think to yourself, so the whole magazine thing, a lot of this is the photographers pushing this, mm. right? I want to be in magazines, I want to be in magazines. You really need to turn around and say, when was the last time I bought a magazine? Yeah. So with nobody buying the magazines, how are the magazines making any money? Because the advertisers... Are not going to advertise into a magazine that nobody's no one's buying. buying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's this big circle thing that every photographer wants to get printed, but they don't even buy printed material themselves. Yeah. Um, but anyway, with the magazine side of things, the best normally the best way to go about it is if you go to their uh, main front page. Nearly all the good magazines will have a submissions area, how to submit to the magazine. If you want to get into Vogue and things like that, now nah, forget it. Mm. They've got their own shooters which are shooting the way that magazine wants to look or they get big name shooters who are going to sell the magazine or there have been a lot of the advertorial workers, the, client, the, the person who has booked the, the six page spread which you think is an editorial but it's actually an advertorial, they will have their own graphics and um, photographer and everything. Yes. Uh, so not being downer. Yeah, the, some of the online magazines are easier to get into, but again, just ask yourself, how many of them are you looking at? Mm. So why do you want to get printed into something nobody's looking at? Yeah. Um, don't, there's, I, as much as I hate social media, there's nothing wrong with just posting on there. Po having your own site, your, your own stuff on a site you're in control of, and then if people like you, they'll come and what, what, look at your work. And the world's changed so much now. Yes. Peter says, do you ever say that sexy instead of cool, 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 or is that too much? And also a question for me, would it be too much if the photographer is saying that is really sexy? Yeah, for me personally, I don't like that word. So I would probably be a little bit turned off by it, but that's just for me. Personally, thing I don't know, it might work for some people, but I don't like that word. Just me personally. Um, I've said that word a few times back in the days when I was shooting I fishing and things like that. Oh my gosh. No, I'm serious. And I'd be shooting and I might silhouette these fly fishermen casting 
far north Queensland, or far north in Australia, with the sunset going down and every, the lighting's just perfect. And one of the, the fishermen's hooked up on a fish and a fish has jumped as up. And I was looking at the back of my camera and go, oh my God, that's sexy. <laughs> but in front of a model, now I think nearly, I don't think there's any, mo- oh, I know of one model that would actually like it. But that's what I, I think it's a personal it's thing. Personal like- thing. I guess a lot of my models wouldn't like that word. They mm. would take it as a sexual comment. Yeah. Especially in this day and age, but there is some. There's I I know a certain model that we've worked with that yeah that she would, she'd she'd think that, that yeah she'd actually build off that. But it's a thing where you're going to have to understand who you're shooting and what you know what works for their brain. Yeah. I'm just chopping up some onions. These will be. You'll see what happens. These a bit later. <laughs> Uh, where was I with the questions? Now, one little thing before someone asks a question. So, lots of people ask me about camera gear. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots of people say, oh, it's all right for you. You've got this gear. It's all right. All of this stuff. And they keep on bringing it back to you. can't take a decent picture without really, really good camera gear. So, I'm going to just give you my analogy to good camera gear with these two onions. So you'll see this onion here, this knife is a very expensive knife, it was given to me as a present, and you'll see how effortless I can cut through it. Mm-hmm. Right, cut through beautifully, through, it stays razor sharp for a long time, it will completely take ends of fingers off if you don't get them out of the way. Ooh. But that cut that up just perfect. You've got a bit of onion stuck on your knife. That's cut that up perfect. All right, so I'm talking about, I think this is about a four or $500 knife. Damn it, I was about to say I want one. <laughs> <laughs> and I use this $200 to keep it yeah. sharp. Right. Then I can grab this $20 knife mm-hmm. and I can cut this onion up a little bit more work but it still cut the onion up exactly how that (laughs) onion's cut up nobody's going to be able to say oh you used an expensive knife to cut that onion and a cheap knife to cut that onion still does the job it's still doing the job (laughs) such a good analogy (laughs) i know i thought about this earlier today i thought this because i really love using that knife but i thought yeah it costs so much most people would never use it and i've only got it because it was a gift Mm. But this is where I'm coming with camera gear is the same. At the end of the day, you couldn't pick which onion was cut up with what knife. Yeah. So when it comes to it, if you gave me an entry-level digital Canon camera or Nikon or whoever you want and gave me a Hasselblad camera, I could still take a great photo with both of those cameras. Yeah. I might have to be more careful about different things with one of the cameras. But as a whole, I would just know, it's like this, I've got to be more careful with this, it'll take the finger <laughs> off easier, but it's so much easier to cut. Yeah. But then when it comes down to the end picture, the way I do my retouching, I break my pictures anyway. So I'm shooting a lot of the time, I'm shooting my hassle about 800 ISO because I wanted a bit emulsion-y. And I'm quite often pushing my contrasts and curves and things like that, taking it away from perfect. And I quite often defocus slightly, so I've taken off the razor sharpness of expensive Otis lenses. Yeah, which is funny. But, but don't worry, I've, I've thought of that. Oh, I just killed that knife. <laughs> but before you ask the next question, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly roast these chilies without burning them, because otherwise Beck and I will not be able to talk. We will choke to death. Come on. Your fancy new, is this Peter's fancy new oven as well? It's my wife's. Yes, got it as a present for his wife. Mm, it's very nice. Okay, yes. So you're going to roast the chilies? Sorry? Roasting so the chilies? I'm just roasting the chilies up a bit. It's not, I don't want smoke coming off. I want to get them close to it, but it's, um, it's going to enhance the flavors and give them a little bit more of a roasting flavor the reason i have all those different chilies they all do have they're like wines they have different notes some of them are sort of fruity others of them are smoky so that's the reason i'm using all those chilies and half of this recipe was stolen from one chef another half was stolen from another chef you mashed the two i together. mashed the two together till i came up with something i liked yes. uh, 
Can I move on into a question? Tongs. Your tongs. Okay. Yeah. Keep talking, I'll watch. Guerrero Photography. Would like to know, did you go to school to learn photography or are you self-taught? Peter got kicked out of photography school. Lol, 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 lol. Huh? You got kicked out of photography school. Yeah. <laughs> so he is self-taught. 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 Um, the problem with schooling especially is uh, a lot of the lecturers fail as a photographer. Technically, they know all their crap inside and out, but to actually take a good photo themselves, yeah, good luck with that. So you've been taught by someone who... Just knows technicals. Knows the technicals, which is fine. We all have to learn our technicals. It is important for you to know what you're doing so you can break that rule and understand what's going to happen when you break that rule and go, yeah, that's fine, I can live with that rule being broken. Yeah. Then find out later, oh, shit, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have done that. I got taught that when I did... When I did photography in high school, we were being taught about three-point lighting and rules of thirds. And I asked my teacher, well, what if I don't want my photo lit with three-point lighting? And he's like, no, you need to know the rules so you can break the rules. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty much that way. When it comes, and it's different. If you want to be a photographer working in a, a museum or an art gallery and things like that, yeah, you've got to go to uni. Yeah. Or you've got to be taught by those people that can technically... T teach you all of the little stuff that most photographers don't even want to know because it has no has nothing to do with the type of pictures they take but if you want to create art um, even though there's lots of art schools and that I couldn't think of the worst place for you to lose your style and I've seen it happen to so many good up-and-coming young photographers go to college and then all of a sudden their photography just went boring mm. Like really, really boring because the schools are trying to put everybody into this box. So how how are you going to stand out? How are people going to see you? Yeah. And it's a little bit like you turn on the radio. Oh, nobody listens to radio anymore, Susan. I think if you turn on the radio today, the music is just boring. It doesn't matter if it's a new song. We had a model come in the other day and play me a new song, and I pretty much. Mm -hmm. sang the melody before it even got there because it was so predictable of what yeah. was going to happen because they're all living in this little box of rules and formulas to make something successful and now all it is is all boring whereas if I, you will have your own way of you looking at things so you, everything that's happened in your life every movie, every book you've read, every song you've listened to will have had an effect on your life and when you're creating art, all of those little things that nobody else who's lived your life won't have had happen. So it'll give you a distinct feel about if you're a songwriter, or a storyteller. Mm. Whereas if you just go in and say it's just you just only watch a certain type of TV show or only watch a certain type of movie or you're in love with a director and only look at their work, all you're going to create is Stuff a copy like that. of that and you're not going to be unique and different, you're just going to be boring. Yes. Um, but you mostly taught yourself, let me quickly flip oh, yeah, to no, me, by just getting in a studio and playing around with lights, didn't you? Yeah. And when I made my transition from working, uh, shooting lifestyle and fishing and rock climbing, all that rubbish, my... Tra oh, oh, don't, don't kill us. <laughs> I just got a whiff. See the smoke's just coming off? Don't breathe. <laughs> oh I'm God. serious. We don't want chilli in lungs. Chill. It just makes you cough. So all I'm going to do is I've got some chicken stock and I'm now going to hydrate those chilli. So hydrated. Um, that could have been funny. Been. Beck doesn't know what it's like to sniff in chilli yes, smoke. Yes, I do. I was cooking something the other night and the seasoning on the chicken had chilli in it and I kind of burnt it a bit and even my boyfriend was coughing a lot <laughs> and opened up all the windows. <laughs> all right, well, while you're hydrating, I will <coughs> move on to the next question. Yeah. So John says, hello from Perth. What is Peter cooking? Peter is cooking chilli con carne. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have the recipe in the description, but he's kind of talking you through it as well. But it's 
it's really good. He's been making it a lot recently, and you can put it on. You can just have it with corn chips, or you can put it on like a hot dog. You can put it on fries and baked potatoes. Probably even put it in a taco. Yeah, no, it works in taco. Oh, yum, I've so done good. That. Awesome, I love chili. Oh, wait, I have another. I have to ask the next question. Uh, <coughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, that chili is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I touched my lips too. before when I was oh, deseeding no, the, the hot one. <laughs> yes, they're a little bit spicy. <laughs> I did that. We made uh, pickled jalapenos a little while ago, and I was chopping up the jalapenos, and I forgot that I had the chili stuff on my hand, and I think I rubbed my eye, and it was really painful. Anyways. Yeah, no, you don't do that. <coughs> and there's Jeez. another eye you don't go near either. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> Especially for nails. Charles, uh, who... Da, da, da. So like he's a big fan of your work. Would like to know, would you give away a few lines you use during shooting like, tricks to create an emotion, reactions from the model? For example, like talking to male subjects <coughs> about their mother to make them look like vulnerable. Well, he's found that talking to male subjects about their mum makes them look vulnerable. So like, what are some things? So the question is like, what are <coughs> some, some things that you say to get certain emotions? I, I, I spend a little bit of time. I, if anybody who's watching his live stream hasn't seen our latest one with Abby. Yeah. That is the very first shoot I did with Abby, and she'd only been modeling for a very short time. Um, this is Chuck Steak. This is Chuck Steak, and I'm just going to, I think that's, it's about a kilo. Very technical. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> huh? How do you know? Well, it's like my lighting. Well, that's about f.8. Oh if you do it enough, you get used to it. <laughs> um, um, with Abby, you'll see a progression where we're talking and doing things. And if you're not seeing what my mind's doing, so I can't show you that. Have some paper towel. X-rated. Sorry? Oh, I'll just come around and grab it. I spilled a bit of wine. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, so... I have things going through my head, but I already got preconceived. I've already decided what question I'm asking to see what happens to her face. Yeah. So, and Beck seen me work with models all the time, and she sees there might be a slight variation. No, I don't. I close my eyes. You close your eyes. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Continue. I didn't mean to throw you off. You threw me off. I'm sorry. I was trying to make funny jokes. Trying. All I'm doing now um, with this is removing fat or any of that sort of. There's that silvery type of membrane that appears. It just doesn't render down that nice and. Membranes. I just rend I'm just cleaning that off before I cut it up. Now a lot of people use um, mince meat, which is fine, but. You can use any meat you want. You can use whatever you like, but I really, really enjoy. Um, having uneven lumps of meat in it and it stews down really really nicely so even the big bits work out really nice mm. but back on that question um so we, i do have a set of sort of like a routine i go through with a new model i haven't worked with before and it's different for males and females and you're going to be very lucky soon because abby's boyfriend is very attractive and he's sort of getting pushed into the modeling side of things. So I'm going to shoot his folio. He's never modeled before. So we're going to definitely be recording this for YouTube and Inspire. Mm. So people will get to see me work with a male from scratch, as well as we'll finish up after I've done maybe one or two shoots with him. We'll then do a couples type shoot using both Abby and the boyfriend. Yes. But I, it's, Really hard, it's, it's not something I can easily teach. You need to watch what I'm doing. And while I'm actually recording, it's quite hard because I can't say exactly what's in my mind because then that's gonna change the way the model's looking while I'm doing it. So I've gotta be careful of not being obvious. But normally, I'm normally looking for things that relax the model. So one of the things I have found that um, if you can get the model thinking about something that means a lot to them without asking them all these weird questions, like you're a snoop, 
Um, you can use those things to get looks later on from the model. Hmm. So the worst thing in nearly every model that I've done this to on our workshops, because I do a lot of this stuff on workshops, so the worst thing you can do to say to a new model you've never worked with is, do you have a partner? Yeah, so it kind of comes across like... It comes across as creepy. Yeah. Yeah, why do you want to know if I have a partner or not? Mm. Um, whereas I have a way of finding that out without being creepy. So, <coughs> sorry, chilly <coughs> lungs. So there are little things I do. Now, one of the things when we, I got criticised because I... Someone let me know on YouTube that cat owners are more intelligent than dog <laughs> owners. Well, yeah, well, clearly, so, I'm very smart. So there's a type of person that... There's the cat people and then there's animal lovers. And the full-on serious cat people like the attitude that the cat gives. Whereas someone who's more like a, a, a dog person, they want a, a, something that just needs you to live. Whereas a cat doesn't need you to live. In fact, you're hit their slave. Well, I think mine need me <laughs> to provide the business. I'll provide them food. <laughs> no, if you let them out, they'd kill all Australia's natives without a problem. I don't think the white one would. <laughs> so things I've found just over the years that if a model has a dog, there is instantly something that I can get her to relax with. Just simple things like asking the model, you know, what's the name of the dog? What's the type of sex? How long have you had it? Um, the, all of those things, whenever I see them getting stiff, I just try and bring up about their animal or about their pet in the discussions. Yeah. Um, there's something Beck seen me do a few times is working out what type of person the model is. So uh, is the person, um, this is going to sound horrible, but there is people that are materialistic. So if I say to the model, you know, Chanel, Versace, you've got a, a gift card to buy whatever you like in these stores and they start to glow, I've summed up who that person is. So I can use some of those type of, um, I can make stories up that relate to what makes them glow. Yeah. And we had one model once, I can't remember what country it is, and I struggled for ages to work out what floated her boat, like what was the thing that gave her the most joy in the world. And it ended up, the most obvious one was her family. And I know she told me that she had, her sister moved over to stay with her because I was so close. Yeah. So whenever she got a little bit stiff in front of the camera or I wasn't getting the vibe of it, I just would ask a question about her family or her sister and I'd instantly get this more relaxed look. But, yeah, it's not like a five-second answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer anything in five seconds. No, you cannot. Uh, lots, of, lots of people are saying it's the first time catching us live and they've, like, watched the replays. So, hello, yes, we're live. We are here. And <laughs> we're here. We're here, we are. Martin would like to know one best tip to... AF is autofocus, yeah? yeah autofocus, beginning for, beginner photographer, but only one tip. For autofocus? Yeah, big enough. Um, just be really careful when you're using autofocus with back, backlit or very low contrast. It'll always hunt. Hmm. Um, is that the only one? That, yeah, that'd be the only <laughs> one. The, only, the, the other thing is some of the new mirrorless have got these, or well not just mirrorless, all of a lot of new cameras have things like eye detect. And those cameras that have the eye detect, a lot of them have really, really good continuous autofocus. So assign a back button on your camera to have as that. So whenever you're holding it down, the camera will auto focus on the eye. And then you don't have to worry about focusing. It's just gonna always be, well, most of the time be on focus. So that'd be, and then my final tip, learn how to manual focus. <laughs> So I had a day, I was shooting the other day for that Amy shoot and it was the way the light was and shooting into the white psych, my Hasselblad just would not autofocus. Oh yeah. So I just bang, went, went to straight manual. to manual. Yes. 
Dan would like to know, is there a difference between the Hasselblad 50C versus the 100C in terms of looks or depth of field? Is the 100C actually closer to the film medium format? I bought the 100C for that reason. Well, that's why I bought it, because with the larger sensor size, um, I wanted to get more of that medium format feel out of my lenses. So it shortened all my lenses, and I was hoping to see a big difference in the picture. I didn't see that great a difference. Um, the camera is lovely, love it to bits, but it, for what I'm doing, it wasn't, it's not really suits my way of shooting. I don't need a hundred mega, I don't need a hundred megapixels. To me, it's just the file size. I don't need that file size, especially with now that what you can do in Adobe where you can basically four times your image size without causing any damage at all. The I'm going through four terabytes a friggin' month as it is without going to a hundred uh, megapixel camera. And um, so that was a downer for me because it was meaning more hard drives. It also meant slower capturing. So with my 50C, I can get about two frames a second, which is a good speed for me to beat the model. What I mean by that, a model will quite often you'll click and they'll put and pose, but two frames a second, they can't get to that pose. So you can stop them getting into this sort of routine. Whereas uh, 100 was about, uh, a frame every, I think it was 1.8 seconds, I just called it two seconds. And I found that was really, really annoying when I was trying to get an emotiveness off a model, but she could time herself to when I could shoot. Mm. So, but image quality, amazing, no problem with that. Um, couldn't really see much difference, except it could zoom in more, so I had more detail if I zoomed in, but I don't, didn't need that. I don't crop, so I don't don't need that size, and just that faster ability to shoot, so I can beat the model's brain, was the reason I don't really use that camera anymore. Yes. But if you're shooting landscape or still life or not it's models, awesome, yeah. it'll be perfect. Yeah. Or if you're doing those really, really, the portraits where you're really, really. Um, Everything's set up, everything's perfect. There's no movement where you can take your time and just shoot like the old film days. Um, yeah, it'd be absolutely fine. And if I, models like Beck, yeah, the hundreds fine with models like Beck because we could always, uh, Beck doesn't do that timing movement thing. No. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Mark would also like to know what is your opinion on mirrorless cameras? On which? Mirrorless, mirrorless. love them. Yeah, mirrorless is. Mirrorless to me is the best. It's mirrorless is like stepping from film to digital. Mm. Our main reason is now you don't need to p see a picture, so you don't have need to take a picture to see if you can see it through your viewfinder. You can set up your overexposure warnings, um, your focus peaking. Everything's in your viewfinder. Anything that makes my job easier to capture a good shot, I like. <laughs> and I just find mirrorless makes it, like I can be in a worse lighting situation. Instantly I can see the model's cooking on part of her face with the zebra ring. Yeah. So I can fix it before I even take a picture. Hmm. So I'm gonna be a little bit noisy for a second. Sorry, a little bit longer. So why I'm doing <laughs> this is, um, I don't want mincemeat, but I do want some of it to be quite small pieces to go in between the bigger pieces. Sorry about that, everyone. Sorry about that. I should have done this beforehand. That's all right. I'll just do, finish it off with just a little bit of a this and slicing. see if I can get some fingertip in it. No, geez. James said, sorry, they're joining late. What are we cooking? Pete, I'm not cooking anything. I don't know why I said we. You're Peter. cooking it. You're always cooking it. <laughs> Peter's cooking chili con carne. And moving on to the next one, because I answered that really quickly. And Craig said that he just got on and heard three coughs. Do we have COVID? No, that was because Peter had to cook the chilies <laughs> and he let them cook a little bit too much and it started smoking and 
it was like, I don't know if you've ever, I'm just going to cough again now. If you ever smell chilies, yeah, it's really smoky, it makes you cough a lot. Uh, yeah, someone answered him. Sorry, I'm falling a bit behind because... I think it's a COVID cure. If you fill your lungs full of chili smoke, you can't catch COVID. Uh, do you ever shoot men from James? Um, yeah, I'll shoot whatever yeah. client wants me to shoot. Yes. I just don't shoot uh, a lot of men because a lot of men don't know what they want and they're 100% insecure and unhappy with their look. Jared which said he'd be happy to do the in my pants. I asked him last night. Did he? Yeah. Oh, good. You said he wouldn't. I thought he He modelled better than you did on that commercial <laughs> shoot. He said he wants to go to the gym first to lose some COVID weight. <laughs> COVID <laughs> weight. <laughs> he can't go to the gym. They're all shut. I know. All right. Anyways. Uh, I'm not too sure how to say this person's name. I'm sorry, but they're shooting TFP and it happens to end up while discussing what kind of shoots the model wants to do that's they're in a business that isn't allowed to publish shoots in lingerie. How do you avoid that? So I guess like if they have a kind of professional job. Right, so you, those are only private? Yep. For her to share and you not to share, I wouldn't be shooting lingerie with someone like that. It's only gonna end up in drama. So I know where he's coming from. So if you've got a model who is studying to be a lawyer or a politician or something like that, they've got to be so careful about what images are out there later on. Yeah. Because now, if you were going to get a job in a law firm, They'll putting the chili and the juice all in a blender, um, <laughs> they will do a Google search on you. Yeah. And some of the bigger firms, like if you're talking about big legal firms and that, they'll actually do a face recognition search on you. Really? Yep. Because then you can have a modelling name. Well, that's um, not going to cut it. Geez. So, yeah, I would say I wouldn't be shooting anything that's out of her comfort zone for her to show the world. Because you can't show the world and yeah. she can't show the world. So what's the use of doing it? So, yeah. Yeah, I'd be very careful with that. I personally would say, yeah, I'd love to shoot you beautiful. We're just going to do the most beautiful headshots or we're going to find appropriate types of clothing that's going to suit what you're planning, what you're worried about. I'm going to be noisy again for a minute. <laughs> right. I'll try and do it as quick as I that's can. Like can pre can All I'm doing is quickly that. vitamizing this really thin. This is really good TV. It is. <laughs> they no, can't it's, see it's me. It's just me sitting here doing a little dance, <laughs> drinking wine. They, no, I moved so they could see you. They, oh, I'll did you? Back to you? Yeah, so I just made this beautiful, beautiful chili goop. Chili goop, wow, that's so goop. appealing. Next. Martina says, a nice t shirt. Yes. So, sorry? It's a lovely t shirt Peter oh. is wearing. <laughs> All about Beck. Anyways, this is my channel. This is my channel now, guys. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not. It's your channel where we do photography stuff and we talk about the lenses and the lighting. Um, where was I? All right, so while she's um, looking up a okay, question, I'll flick it to I'm putting some oil into this and I'm going to get this nice and hot and I'm just going to brown, carefully brown um, this chuck steak off. Now you can ask questions again. Okay. We'll need that and that. What time is it there? It is 10, 10 to, oh, 6.48 p.m. So it's nearly 7 o'clock. And dot, 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 dot. Hank wanted, just wanted to say that they've learned a lot about how you play with lighting from watching your videos and they've been able to make their live streams look 10 times better by using what they've learned. That's awesome. Thank you. Cool. We can't make our low things look good. <laughs> yes, we can. This looks fine, I think. Does it? Yeah, well, I think so. Sometimes you're a bit dark, but that's okay. I don't want to go too shallow on you. Because we c yeah, we could go crazy with having... Well, I've got lots of, I've got lots of friends in TV and sound things that, and we can be mm. full over the top. That's not what we're about. This is already like a lot. This is already <laughs> over the top for us. It's not what we do. It's more the content yeah. 
have than how and our community our community because we love and you alcohols. guys questions questions first <laughs> Robert so the first thing I see is Beck drinking wine yes, of course <laughs> of course What's I'm like actually drinking wine at the moment. Yeah, Peter, let's look at Peter. Yeah, I've got a nice, this is, I'm lucky I've got a bottle up the road that I just found that, an amazing, it was like Taylor $15 Ferguson. a bottle. Taylor Ferguson Director's Reserve. Yeah, Shiraz. but I bought the last two cases because it was so it cheap and so nice. So good. See, I'm happy with just 19 crimes. 19 crimes is good. Oh, not that, Why not, that I know. horrible... Not the Cali, like, like I liked it, but we know we just normally get the um, Shiraz. That's the which one? Shiraz. That's Jared's favourite. The Shiraz one? Yeah. The blend I didn't mind, but I hated the wrapper one. <laughs> the California the Snoop Dogg one. Snoop Dogg one, it was so sweet. Oh, is this still on me? Oh, I thought, sorry, I thought it was on Peter. Uh, Are you coming up with a question yet? Yeah. You haven't for a while. Mark says, Peter, while most of Australia is in a lockdown, how are you going to keep your business up and running? Yeah, thank They're you. They're <laughs> finding a lot of people keen to shoot, but just unable to. Commercial-wise, impossible. Yeah. Um, this year has been the hardest because we are all promised, and I saw a little blurb come up, by our government that if we don't do what we're going to do now, we'll in 2021, we're going to be in and out of lockdowns all yeah, year. Yeah, I saw that clip as well and I laughed. And so like, yeah, funny about that. And everything we did last year hasn't fixed that problem. But for business, especially small business, big business are fine. They've got, they've got the power to, to get landlords. You know, if they've got mm. 40 buildings around all under the same, they don't want to lose that landlord. You know, yeah. that, so they've got the power. Like, we just, just this week, we've had... Three, just our power company, MYOB, and someone else, and our, our landlord all put uh, the rates person, up. Yeah. In this, like, how can you, but we're just not earning any money. So we had, we had, no, after the last lockdown, we came out with hardly any bookings. And it took us a couple of weeks till our clients got comfortable enough to start booking, booking stuff. Yeah. We finally started getting full weeks booked up. We got knocked lockdown again. And the clients have just gone, oh, we're just going to shoot it with iPhones. Mm. We can't wait any longer. We need it on our web page. Yeah. So this type of stuff is killing us. And the reason, you know, we've, Beck and I have had to push harder on doing stuff for YouTube and Inspire and things like that, because really it's the it's only way we fun. can make any money. Yeah. Or you can buy a Beck t-shirt and <laughs> we earn like five dollars. <laughs> So That's mostly... 100,000 people if you can buy a big t-shirt to keep her in a job. <laughs> we, we don't actually sell the t-shirts for money. It was just that no. people kept asking them, asking people like us if we could sell them. So we put them up. But we it actually was never, a, like, never des des We don't make money off of those. It wasn't, it's just like, yeah. people buy them. People buy them, but no. we, did, didn't do, we only sort of did it because people were asking. Yeah. So all I'm doing now is just going to... Noisy again. Brown the crap out of this. I'm sorry. It's That's not something really loud too, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Who, who decided to do cooking? Who decided to do chili? So, to answer to your question, you've just, you've really got to be smart. If you're on the same business, you've just got to find ways of diversifying, cutting your overheads, cutting your costs as low as you can, mm. and trying to pre-arrange and work out stuff so as soon as you can work again, you can just go crazy. I don't know if people can hear me, I should double check. How come in the cooking videos they're not this loud? I don't know. Well, they're probably because it's edited. I don't know. Question? Question? I'm just asking uh, Hank asked where they can buy the t shirts, so I'm just sending oh. the link. Uh, Oh, and I was going to add in, I don't know if anyone can hear me though. Sorry? <laughs> I was going to add about the how we're keeping the business going. We, Pete, me, Peter and I were talking before, we're thinking about doing like a Zoom workshop. It won't be, it won't be like our normal workshops, obviously, but we're still thinking of trying to make that happen somehow. So we're just going to work out the logistics of that a little bit more, but stay tuned because that's something that we're probably going to look at doing since we don't know when we'll be able to do in-person workshops again. I don't know if anyone heard that. I'm sorry if you didn't hear me. I can't hear you, so... 
So how, all right, so even better, how is it for you? How's what for me? The whole lockdown situation would work and what we're doing now to what we used to do. Yeah, like I, it's definitely a lot different. Like I used to, like the, the things that I do has changed because a lot of my job used to be organising, travelling and booking accommodation, booking flights and studios and advertising and all models, and models and all of, and catering and I, that used to be a huge portion of my job and I don't do that anymore. So I've just kind of got to shuffle around what I do within my job to keep myself busy. Yeah, it's just she gets on Instagram and drinks wine <laughs> and plays Candy Crush. <laughs> no, it's vicious. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's changed, but I think by lockdown six, it's kind of Groundhog Day now. I lost, I lost the plot around lockdown two, so I'm just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> when they're like, you guys are going to be locked down again, I'm like, here we go again. So I'm, I don't know, I'm just kind of over it. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, okay. Best thing is just do some homework, get better at things. Learn yeah. your cameras better, learn your menus yeah. better, practice, do all the stuff that you were too busy to do in your normal life. Do all of those things so when you come out, you come out better. Um, there's so much good stuff on YouTube to better yourself in all different areas. And it could even be, look at some of the marketing sites and I bet cringes every time I say things like that. But I learned so much by watching all these different, completely different styles of marketing sites and I just take the little nuggets that work for me. Yes. I think Peter's nearly done browning the meat. But I don't think you can hear me over there. Jonathan said that it's a great shade of red on the oven. It's not quite right. It's not Melbourne red. <laughs> what? Well, Melbourne red's my car's colour. Oh, right. That's actually called Melbourne red. Right. <laughs> um, Robert says that they agree with Hank. I have to say thank you, learned so much from you, so valuable. We recreated the middle finger photo from the YouTube channel and a few others. And thank you for all your effort. No, oh, thank you. Thank you, that's awesome. But still, it's, um, I wish I, I don't, can't remember. There's things that'll give you inspiration. And back saw recently I was getting, I can vary really quickly. I can go from super pumped to super flat really yeah. quickly. Um, you know, just hearing a certain premier's voice will make me super flat instantly. So then I'm looking for something to pump my, m me back up. And I was getting really flat because I was, I couldn't create. I couldn't do anything to create what I wanted to do. Mm. But then I watched this thing about um, camera angles in cinematography. And it was an amazing... What I'll do, Beck's going to have to look it up and she'll put it up tomorrow. So I'll have to find it again. It was an amazing thing with this uh, guy talking about camera angles in cinematography and then use it, showing you how to use these angles and how to use the cameras to tell the story. And it went from camp, so video cameras on fixed things on dollies, on gimbals, oh. on cranes, super low angle, super high angle, all these different angles but also showed you the movies that were used in and spoke about the effect that that angle made on the shot which told the story. And this really, I really, really enjoyed it, especially as a thing called a chest cam and you strap this thing on your chest the camera arm comes out here and films back on you. And I didn't even realise that I think it was one of those um, Seth Rogen comedies where he's running to get away from a drug crazed person and that's the shot and it gives this it's shaking like crazy but it's shaking yes, with his head at the same time. Yeah. Um, so it's a long story going nowhere but I'll try and make <laughs> it go somewhere. So that really got me interested but part of it they went into a couple of Tarantino movies and spoke about the camera angles he used in different shows and why he used it and where these were used before and another one Shining there's a, the camera angle which was a foot cam oh. coming up while he's at the door oh, yeah. and that was incredible foot cam a cam on the mm -hmm. foot 
But anyway, when on Tarantino, at the end of this thing, there was another little thing that came up about, there was a little thing on Tarantino's movies. Mm. And I'm a Tarantino nut, and I learned all this stuff I never even knew. And it was just like in Pulp Fiction, a dancing scene, how the Uma Thurman's was based off a cartoon cat doing this, yeah. and John Travolta's was based off 1940s Twister in some of the silent movies. And yeah. it was just so inspiring to see someone like Tarantino has grabbed little bits of inspiration from so many different areas and then blend them into what works with him. So, yeah, yeah that's... Things like that on YouTube now, if you've got dead time, it's really easy to get down, fall down really good rabbit holes. Hmm. And that was a great rabbit hole. I really enjoyed... Good. Really finished the really noisy finished stuff. The noises. Just so all I'm doing is I'm just browning it all because it's going to... This is what's going to put the really nice meaty flavour because you're going to get that nice roasted sort of meat taste and all of the... Juices? All the burnt bits in here, we're going to get all of that to work in a minute. Yum. I'm just going to do... Oh, I've got two more batches. Uh, how is the COVID situation here? It is, well, it's not good in Sydney. Melbourne's... Well, We're not, getting like a deck a week and maybe... Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not very it's not big, great, but our, but our government's big. in... Um, eradication. Eradication mode, not... Um, we'll have to just live with it yeah. mode at the moment. Yeah, so... We're locked down. It's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. We're locked down, but it, it's not like out of control, I guess. And what are we cooking? Again, we're cooking chili con carne. I've got the recipe in the description. And apparently cooking shows have a gate on the audio software to limit the sizzling sound. Oh, yeah. There you go. But, yeah, we're, we're not uh, that clever. No, we're I not. I know what gates in that are. Okay. But, yeah, we couldn't be bothered setting all that stuff up. It would be exciting to look over your shoulder at an outdoor shooting. Is there something like that in the planning? Yeah, we want to do more outdoor shoots, but <laughs> right now... We look good. Not only and that, it's winter. It's, it's winter. It's in like it's still pretty with some weather here today. I can check on my laptop. And we did. We were going to do quite it's a bit. Thirteen over degrees. Summer. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but we were going to do with some in summer. But then we were in and out of lockdowns. So. No, but we didn't really get much of a summer anyway. Most that of, as well. Um, because where we want to shoot, we got to sort of wait till the school holidays are finished. Because everyone's there. Yeah. We don't can't find nice quiet areas. Um, and as soon as the school went back, the weather went nasty. So we had a cold, this is our second cold summer in a row. Yes. I hope we get a nice one next year, so, well, next summer, so I can sit under my nice new pergola. I know it is, <laughs> it is definitely in the works. We do want to do more outdoor shoots for YouTube. It's just we need to wait for the weather and wait for not to be in lockdown. But no, we definitely will do it. And people like the cooking show, yes, we... People like the cooking? We thought people wouldn't like it, but then we, we kept getting really good People keep it, asking. So. so what I've done, I've browned all the bigger bits. So now what I'm going to do is I want to just get these a little bit translucent. And, but, and I'm going to put in, this is a trick I learned from a really good cooking channel called Food Wishes, that if you put a couple of anchovies into things like tomato sauce and that, what it does, it really adds the salt without it being salty that and brings like out the flavours. Sorry? It looks like a good anchovy. It's three. Oh. <laughs> I normally use two, but I grab three. So what I'm doing, I'm putting just into this, and it's a filthy pan now, but I'm just going to put the anchovies in, the onions in, Ooh. and I'm breaking the anchovies up. And all I want to do is just get the onion starting to get a little bit translucent. So I won't talk much about photography for a minute because this part is a little bit hectic. So the onions are just starting, because it's very hot in this pan now, they're just starting to translucen up. I keep it moving so none of it's going to burn. Now I'm pushing all the onions, the anchovy, all over 
to one side. Now, anchovy sort of mashed up a lot. You can't even, you only see tiny little chunks of it. And now I'm going to get the rest of this. This is the mint, the beef that I chopped up finer. I'm going to drop on the other side of the pot. So onions are on that side, the beef's on this side. And I'm just going to pre-brown it a little bit. And a little bit of fat that's going to come out of the meat is going to mix in with the onion. Nearly there, sorry. Not a very good photography show at the moment. <laughs> well, being live, see, nobody else does them live. That's the difference. Yeah. All of the people, they all... And Babish, he puts his voice over later, though, so that's why yeah. he doesn't have any cooking sounds. There we go. So I'm now mixing it all together. So I just round that bit. It's the onions have gone translucent. Then... I need to get all of that mess off the bottom of the pan. The bottom of the pan is sort of very black. Sorry, I can't show you. Sure. you that. Yeah. So now I'm going to use a good, good Mexican beer. <laughs> so anyone knows about good Mexican beers? I've got a really I good Mexican really beer. <laughs> and this is then going to deglaze. Ooh. So I'm putting about half of that can of Mexican beer. And this is going to clean all that rubbish off the pot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. My nightbot just started muting people. <laughs> Did it? I just realised I didn't have it turned on and then I like I, I didn't have it joined on the channel and I just clicked join channel and now it's just muted a bunch of people. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> Let me fix up my... <laughs> well Sorry, done. I have spam protection on because we got raided by bots one night and... Okay. <laughs> Right, so that's deglazed it, so the pan is down all nice and clean. I'll put the rest of the Mexican beer in there. Has anyone commented about the Mexican beer? No, I, well, I can't see anything because it's just got muted, 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 muted. Oh, I turned my oh you idiot. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys, I didn't, right. I didn't mean for it to work that well, but... So um. Now some, the garlic I diced up before goes in there. Um. Uh, Michael, Michael did want to know, are you making chilli regular or hot? Um, anybody can eat it. It's got spice in there, but yeah. because with the way I didn't put the seeds in, so if you want to add heat, you can always add it later. So all of that meat now goes in there. So yeah, this is family friendly. I've got family friendly. My wife doesn't like super hot things, neither does my son if he's ever over. <laughs> Um, so now that's all the meat in there. So this is just a bit where I'm a bit hectic. So now Beck can read out our list of herbs and spices. Okay, I will. Oh. I feel bad people have been muted and I didn't mean to mute them. Gee, you're a bitch. <laughs> I feel well, really anybody bad. you don't like just gets killed. <laughs> so I didn't I so didn't in this, this has got Sorry, cumin. I'll, I'll it does go. have a little bit of chilli powder in here. Uh, it's got... Um, uh, it's got... I'll read it out. It's got, has it got cocoa powder in there? Cocoa powder. So a tablespoon of cocoa powder, three tablespoons of cornmeal, one tablespoon of toasted and freshly ground cumin, one tablespoon of dried oregano, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and one teaspoon of chili powder. So that's all in There's there. There's no paprika. No paprika. Wow. What's the paprika? It's shook. I'm getting close. There's not much left on here. There's a little bit to go, but... All right, so that's... Just mixing all of that in. Now that beautiful chili that we did before, that now goes in. All of the chili goop. All the chili goop. Now, because I don't so want to waste any of the chili goop, yeah. the rest of the chicken stock, because ah. a real easy recipe, because it's a whole thing of chicken stock and it's a whole can of beer. Mm -hmm. It's nearly done. So, just gonna put that back on. Make sure I don't get it over myself. So all, I just don't want to lose any of the flavors I've got before. So that's all in there. All of that's in the pot. 
not much more to go. So we have um, what are the tomatoes again? What's where are they from? San Marzano. San Marzano. So there, that's just diced t tomatoes. So one can of diced. Now you can use fresh. I do normally use six to eight Roma tomatoes, but right now in Australia I can't find ro nice. Well, you can't find the wrong time of year. Ground-grown Roma tomatoes, so I'd rather use good can tomatoes. And this is whole peeled, same tomatoes, and I'm just going to mash them in there. So that's in there. Yeah, really close. Really I'm close? feeling like I'm missing something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling bad for people being muted. <laughs> So anybody that muted Beck? No, I muted them. I'm really sorry. Oh, so Beck well, I didn't. I didn't personally do it. I turned on my spam protection bot because I realised it wasn't on before, which it should have been on, and it just went crazy and muted people. Sorry. You guys weren't even spamming, so I feel really bad. So anybody who's asked a question that we haven't answered, just ask it again. Yeah, no, we have questions. I was oh. just waiting for you to finish describing what you were doing. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I've only got. Okay. Two more things to add. Well, has Tanya, is Tanya not working now as a model? No, she's not. She, she stopped, when did Tanya stop modeling? A while ago. She actually stopped modeling maybe two years ago. Yeah. She was doing a little bit with us, yeah. but she basically didn't want to shoot with any photographer and she got fed up with really bad clients that wanted, just, she didn't, wasn't into the whole cheap, crappy fashion turnover. Fast that type fashion. of stuff, really low end. Mm. And she wasn't enjoying a lot of the f people she was working with. Um, so she kept on coming in just for hangouts and would always shoot. But a lot of her stuff she's doing now, she's into wellbeing and mm. internal, she's very much into you know, the, her yogas and- Meditating, meditating and sound healing. And that's more her business. She still keeps on sending him every couple of days, I miss you, we're gonna have a shoot or have a play. <laughs> but lockdown's made that hard too. Yeah. Final ingredient is, now you don't have to put these in, and you can use kidney beans, but I prefer the black beans. Um, oh, and I've got a, an online store I get, that's right, I've got a, I was going to say, they're very cheap. I've got an online store that I buy these off because I don't, the ones that we can buy in Australia from whatever that brand is that has tortillas and that, and mushy, and I don't want a mushy. <laughs> I like a nice so and firm. Mushy. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do So we regarding wine do you drink only <laughs> do you, you drink uh, only red or others okay i i drink any wine but it depends on the weather is how i just depend like decide on what wine i'm drinking so it's winter right now so i'm drinking red but once it moves into spring i'll probably move to a rosé and then if it's a really hot summer's day i love a crisp white but mostly red is my go-to what about you peter you, you mainly only like red i pretty much drink red i good champagne i like oh yeah i like champagne um, don't very rarely drink whites. Have you ever seen me drinking white? No. Yeah, if it's white wine weather, I'm normally on a beer, like a good Mexican beer, like a Kilkenny, <laughs> or a. No one's picked a, up on your drink. A Russian beer, like a Corona. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Comedian. <laughs> it is done. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm very, I'm much, I love big, heavy, full body, complex, complex. Um, Shirazes and Cab Savs. Yums. And so is it true that wine is, I don't know what that word, but do we need wine to do creative work? Um. <laughs> They said it with a little I've cheeky I've convinced face. myself I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said it with a cheeky face. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's, it's I pretty much, I love the, I, I'm not one of these people that live by clocks and watches because I quite often work till three or four in the morning. Mm. 
Um, so my body clock's all over the place, but I found a lot of times when I was traveling in Europe and especially Spain and things like that, that, you know, that lunchtime wine was just such a nice reset of the day. Halfway through the day, you reset, then go back and do the second half. But you'd tend to do it with a different, I don't know, you're more positive. Well, I found I was. I'm always more positive after wine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to get that to come up to the boil. The boils. And Warren said, as long as there's no coriander, that's what matters. It will be served with coriander. I'm very sorry to disappoint. Oh, she's worried about. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Warren is. Warren said, as long as there's no coriander. Soapy okay. dirt. Soapy dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yes, Nightbot does hate the chat, which is why I turned it off, because it just, it killed so many things. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you only need to turn it on if we see a bot come in. Yeah, well, I, I had it turned off, and then I was like, oh, I actually forgot to turn it on. And then I turned it on, and it was just like, goodbye. And just deleted like a bunch of things. Good ones. Awkward turtle. A question for Beck. What do I look for in a photographer to say yes and keen to work with them? Is this a model? No, they're asking oh. me what like oh, what, what do you? I look for. I as if I like their work really. I just I know I'm pretty fussy. It just comes down to personal taste. Like I don't work with many photographers. I work with Peter and then the other few photographers I work with, they do stuff that's totally different to Peter. Like, highly saturated <laughs> plastic <laughs> skin. <laughs> but that's just the look that I like. So it's hard to say, just if if I like I just have a I have a certain certain look that I like and if I like the look of their work then I'm pretty flexible. I feel like I've left something out but I don't think I have. Oh, I also look for the like, I don't like things that look, if it looks sleazy, if it looks like it's men magazine, I'm pretty much like no, like I don't, I'm not really into people who only do like boudoir type photos or only do like lingerie stuff that's kind of not my jam i'm more into like fashion type of stuff so yeah i'm not i'm not into kind of men magazine photographers that's going to put me off straight away well i think you also do a little bit to what i when i'm training people mm. in the very early days of their careers is have a look at the folio or have a look at the picture you want to sh shoot or replicate mm. and then put your face on that picture. Yeah. And just say, would I be happy if yeah. this picture had my face on it? I think that's kind of what I do. And I think that's a lot of, but that's, that's what I mean. It just comes down to my taste. Like I'll yeah. look at their photos and be like, oh, I really like their style. I wish that was me in that photo. Yeah. Whereas if I look at the photos, like oh, I would hate that if that was a photo of me, then I'm probably not going to work with them. So just like taste and this. I wish I had a better answer, I'm sorry. That was a good answer. <laughs> okay. That was my answer. I was just adding to your answer. Uh, Warren said one of the best dishes they made was the Robert Rodriguez so slow roasted pork from the Once Upon in Mexico movie. Yes. Have you made it? No, I haven't, but it's definitely on my list of things. <laughs> I'll go see if the, 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 I wonder if Babish, if Babish has done it. Anybody Probably. It's cooking with Babish, is it? Binging with Babish. Bing, binge. If you haven't heard of it, it's a really good He's cooking show. He's very, very sarcastic, dry, funny, dry. But he is really, really good. And a lot of his recipes, or a lot of things he cooks, is taken from movies. Yeah, well that's, um, so he does, he does basics with Babish, where he just cooks his own stuff, and then he does binging, which he takes stuff from movies and TV shows and cooks it. And yeah, the first, I think the first, so I used a little bit of his recipe for this and it was from a movie and at the end of it he served it on some carpet because in the movie it was spilt on carpet and oh. the guy ate it off the floor. Yeah. So the bitch serves it on a piece of carpet Sorry, and that's thanks. how you eat it. Yes. Cool, so, Millie. Um. You got questions? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to work out how to pronounce their name. I come, I'm really bad at pronunciation. I'm very sorry. Um, but they want to know if they can get freelancing works like video editing. We do all of that ourselves because Peter is extremely fussy. Even some things that I edit, Peter doesn't like the way that I edit. So, yeah, it's just, we're kind of just a two-man show, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Well, it's... 
It's not that I'm... Well, you're it is on Facebook. You must um, <laughs> with, with the video side of things, no, it's not so... I am... There's a certain style that we want in the video. We don't want to over-edit it. We want to keep what actually happens. Mm. We cut out things like, if I say, um, too much, and things like that, I'll remove. But there's other things which you'd think, oh, you should have removed that. But I think, no, that added to the story. Yeah. And that's hard to get somebody else to understand. When it comes to the actual stills, mm. it's, I sort of say, get Leonardo da Vinci to paint a, oh, he's a famous, yeah, he was a painter, I think a so. sketcher. Oh, well, yeah, we'll get him to paint a picture till 90% done. They'll hand it to somebody else to finish. Yeah. It's, it's not what you I know doing. a lot of photographers who work commercially never retouch any of their work, but it's not their work, it's for the client. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the stuff I do, even a lot of my commercial work, is still based around this is my shot. Yeah. Even though I'm not into shooting Harley Davidson taillights, but you this is, they've booked me for my look, and this is what I'm going to do for my look. So I'm just going to do a bit of hot plate shuffling. Well, you do that. Someone asked before and I forgot to answer. I read it and I forgot to even ask it. Our camera gear for today. So this camera that's on me is a Sony A7C with a 18mm badass, which is on a gimbal just to keep it kind of upright. This is next to me. Can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see the tripod. Oh, wow, I didn't even realise that. My bad. This is a really right stuff tripod with a Sony A7S Mark III, is it? Yep, Mark III. Cool. With a 16-35mm lens and that's on Peter. And that is the only camera we're using. <laughs> cool. So, with the magic of television... <laughs> <laughs> it's all of a sudden ready. <laughs> It's all of a sudden ready. It and here's one, here's one I prepared earlier. This, it cooked for five hours. <laughs> so, yeah, so I did a, I did a batch. We, I cooked it, started cooking at about 12 o'clock and did a batch because we're not going to cook this stuff and not eat it. Yeah. And it really needs to simmer. For like five And be hours. stirred for, for three to five hours. The longer the better. Um, so, since Beck hasn't had much to say... Oh, no, I do. Questions? I you haven't been asking them. Because you're talking. Oh. Well, I'll answer some questions while I get set up. Okay. Where was I now? Peter, how do you decide when you have the shot? How do you stop talking, taking more, how do you stop taking more and more pictures? I guess it's about the eyes of an eye photographer. I never stop talking. No, he didn't say talking, I misread no, no. it, he <laughs> said taking. Um, if, and that we're not forcing you all to go and look at other tutorials we've done or other things, but the one we did with Anna, which was replicating light, mm -hmm. you'll have seen the very last frame was the frame we used. Oh, the recreating window light. The recreating window yeah. light. And a lot of the time, I'm looking for a set look. It's in my head, I'm going for it, I'm going for it. And the second I think I ca captured it, mm. I'll go straight to my computer screen, yeah, we got this. And I'll quite often say to the model, can you do better? And if they go, yeah, I reckon do better than that, we'll go back and shoot some more. If they go, nah, that's the shot, we'll yep. finish. And a lot of, there's a lot of shots that um, I've taken, which is the, the very final frame is the frame that we'll end up using. Then there's others which I didn't notice this little quirky expression that might have been in between three or four quick clicks. But yeah, it's pretty much out. And then there's times where I think I got it and then I'll get back to edit and go, oh, I didn't get it. I should have shot some more. Yes. And Mark said that they wanted to say thank you for your help. They know that they only need to message you on Facebook and that you get back to them very quickly. You've saved them in lockdown watching. That's nice, thank you. A lot of the time it's me typing, but it is Peter's answers. I can't type. Peter can't type, so I type. But I always ask Peter, so if you get... Yeah, well, I'm I can type. I type like I take photos. It's that finger and I go type, 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 type. 
So yeah, if you guys ever have any questions, like just send them through and then I ask Peter and then he waffles on and I will get back to you guys as quickly as I can. <laughs> yeah. as as I'll I take 10% of what Peter said <laughs> and make it <laughs> audible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hank would like to know, do you have an entry level flash setup that you could recommend to someone just getting into studio photography? Entry level? Yeah. Um, it really depends what you're going to shoot. If you're going to be shooting fashion or going to be shooting sports or going to be shooting portraiture, all those things are going to vary. But I think, and I'm talking entry level, mm -hmm. is most likely what I hear about is most likely the Godox is the cheapest way to get in with something that's sort of reasonable. Mm -hmm. Then it's sort of not going to compete with Pro Photo and Prong Color, but, but it's an expensive. entry level. Yeah. And all right, your flash might vary a bit in power, and the color temperature might vary in that, but you should still be able to take a good shot. Um, Are you going to get a bowl for Sheree? Oh, I should do, shouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> Why? Why would I want to give my wife? My wife's a chef. She life. can cook her own dinner. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So yeah, the, the go to Alan Crumbs, I think Alan Crumbs is still reasonably cheap in price. The Bron Colour and Pro Photo are just through the roof. They are both amazing lights and they'll last you forever, but they're so expensive if you're not making money or not charging for it and you don't have to have that preciseness that those companies give you. Yes. So it's food time. It's food time. So that answers Michael's question of when the taste test. It's now. And That's right. I'm going to get food time drinks. How much tomatoes did you put in? The whole recipe is in the description. I just copied and pasted it's it. Only, so. It's only put six big romas if you can get them. They need to be good, gro not stuff grown in um, um, hot houses and things. It needs to be proper ground grown in the sun. If not, buy the Italian, what are they called? San, San, San Marzano, I think. Yeah, try, find tomatoes that have been grown and canned in San Marzano in I Italy. That's how it's pronounced. They've got so much flavor. We, it's really hard. We can only get that sort of flavor in Australian tomatoes in summer when they're actually in the ground, not in hot houses. In the ground? Ooh. In the ground. Well, that's where they grow. I, didn't, I thought tomatoes grew on a vine. No, it's a plant. It's not a vine. Oh my God, another shotgun moment. Okay, awkward. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is Tanya not working? No, she's not modeling anymore. We answered that just before. Maybe if you rewind a little bit, we did answer that just before. She'll do some more shoots she with will. me. She will. Because we're best, besties of friends and we besties. really, we just sort of talk and shoot and have fun. And she's always looking for a couple of new photos just for her own business, so. Yeah, exactly. Some people are just joining us. Hello, people that are just joining us now. We're just about to eat. Brett would like to know how are you liking the Sony A1 now? Loving it. Yeah, I I am lo loving it. It's not a Hasselblad. It's a Sony. So, and I like I like the look that Sony gives me. It's different to the Hasselblad, but I am loving the video. Um, is every bit as good as the S, if not in a little bit, there's an area where I like it even better. Um, the stills, I don't need 50 megapixels, so I don't need 30 frames a second. Um, but it is a massive step up as a camera. Didn't you know we put chopped onions on top of it as well? Sorry? I thought we'd put Are you going to tell me how to cook? No, okay, sorry. Um, so... Sorry, being rudely interrupted. Sorry. <laughs> Sony A1, as you were saying. So my normal way of serving this is the chili con carne. Now this is Gouda. In America, they use Monterey Jack. We don't, can't get it in Australia. So the closest what I've found for Monterey Jack in Australia is Gouda. Mm -hmm. um, so just shred it up. Now put it on first because it'll melt in there and give you this amazing skin. It tastes then very Gouda. <laughs> It's just some white onion diced up fine, just a sprinkle of that. Oh my God, I'm like salivating. Um, a bit of soapy dirt. If you don't like soapy dirt, just don't, don't put, put it, it on. on. <laughs> yeah, cilantro or coriander, whatever country you come from. Oh my God, that's so much on that one. Sorry? There's so much on one of them. And then Dollop we do... Nice big dollop of sour cream on the side. Oh, yum. We're going to be noisy eating because we're going to be crunching the chippers. 
And then really good corn chips. Don't use Doritos and things like that. But this is, you, you get a spoon and you have the chips and you just spoon and chip away. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm actually salivating. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely salivating. Do you want a small spoon? Yes, please. Are you gonna come over this side? I will in a second, I'll just clean up a bit. I'll just give oh. you your... Thank you. Your foods, I'll take my wife some food. Back in a second, and Beck will find another question. I'll find questions. Oh my God, I'm so excited to eat, but I don't really want to have the camera on me while I'm eating. That's okay. You guys get to see me eat, which is a really weird thing. And now I oh. found questions, but Peter's not here to answer them, so that's okay. I don't know if he answered enough about the Sony A1. I hope he did before I interrupted him, reminding him that he needed to get onions. Sorry about the dogs barking. Yay, Peter's back. Does it get... A seal of approval? I haven't tried it yet because I don't want them looking at me eating. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> Peter, what would be your main go-to lighting setup that you use the most? Octa. Ah. Big Octa. It's a large light source and I can make a large light source small or big. It gives me a lot of room. Oh, that's boiling like crap. Um, Holy cow, that's good. They're good. Oh, or sen sensational. Where'd me finger? Um, yeah, that would be my favourite lighting in the world is natural light, but commercially it's very, very hard to use because the client will come on an overcast day and they want a high contrast shot. Mm. Um, this is boiling like crazy. Turn this right down. Holy crap. Um, so yeah, but my, my next go-to would be the Octobox or a large softbox. But that's for my style, that's for my look. Mm. Yeah, they uh, were just asking what your go-to is. My, yeah, my safety, if I've got a model coming in, it's not a commercial shoot. My safety is the front window of the studio. I've got a really easy, controllable light that gives me all these different effects. And the sex, if it's a commercial client, I tend to go for a big softbox because I can replicate that when they come back a year's time and want to match the shoot for a new campaign. Um, and then, so my third light would be harsh light, so bare bulb, uh, as in like the pro photo with nothing on it or uh, just your normal style of light with a very small shallow reflector so it's really, really harsh would my, be my number third in my lights. No lights. Oh my god, I can't get over how tasty this is. A bit nice? Uh, a little bit's nice, lots nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's one of the favourite things that I do now. Uh, where, did, where was I up to? Mm. Working with Working with live animals and food <laughs> photography is obviously a totally different story, but what's your experience with dogs or birds or whatever as props in the studio? No different or shooting back. Oh, hey. Um, um, live animals and things like that, I'd put with shooting children. Yeah, you've got like five minutes. You have, you've really, really, really got to do your job properly. And the amount of my clients that do not listen, especially art directors, they're the worst. Mm -hmm. They do not listen to what I say, and all of a sudden the shot is buried, dead, gone for the day. We have to shoot on a separate day. Yeah. Um, you have to have your shit together for when the clients come in, birds, fish, whatever it is. All your lighting sorted, all your camera angles are sorted, what lens you're going to use. Everything is sorted before they even get to the studio or the location. Then once they're on location, you have to get into it as quick as possible because the longer you take, the less that doggy treat or that lolly or that soft toy or whatever you're using is going to have any effect on the picture. And I say to my commercial clients, if you want a good picture of a kid up to about 10 years old, 
we have five minutes studio time. That's it. So in two minutes, drag them out, have some fun, play, get them away, drag them back in two minutes, get them out, and that we might be able to stretch out 10 minutes yeah. in front of a camera. But that's it. And Beck's seen it herself. Uh -huh. And it's normally messed up by the mother or the client. Just fussing over little stuff that means nothing in the photo, but then completely lose the expression of the kid. Yeah. Just because they wanted the teddy bear turned a little bit like that, <laughs> which we could have shot another teddy bear separate and superimposed, and superimposed it. it into that spot. But yeah, the the joys of shooting commercial work. <laughs> um, this is a bit nice, Beck. You should make this more often. <laughs> it's a lot nice. I'm glad you ditched the cinnamon. Glad I ditched the... Cinnamon? Yeah, it didn't work. No. When I'm doing my cooking, I'll make three or four different batches based on different... YouTube's. ...recipes, and then I chop cheese it into Your the one. one that works for my palettes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sony or Canon? Um, I used to shoot Canon before I shot Hasselblad. Loved it. Um, haven't tried their new mirrorless but have hated every mirrorless they did up until whatever they're doing now. Huh. So with that said, I'm still so I'm Sony, but... Whatever works for you. It's like a car. Yeah. It really is. You're going to buy a Mercedes or a Porsche or a BMW or you're going to have what you like. You want the buttons there, you want this there. You're going to have your importance for the tool that you use. And we have lots of people that say to me, why don't I shoot with a Fuji? At least I'm happy with what I'm shooting with. Yeah. If I wasn't happy with what I'm shooting with, then I'll try other brands until I find one that you took are. the replace of the one that I'm not happy with. Yeah. But you're happy. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm so used to driving my car. I had to drive Jared's car the other day because he's got a... Just flick it to Commodore. door. Mm -hmm. He's got an Australian car and I drive a BMW, so it's European, so the stuff's like on the other side. And I went to indicate and I turned the windscreen <laughs> off, so I <laughs> freaked out. So that's enough for you to hate that car. It was really heavy as well. What, did you try and lift it up? No, like, you know what I mean. So the camera's on me eating, and you're <laughs> dribbling in everywhere in privacy. Mm -hmm. This well, is good. Sit over here. Oh, we got to move cameras, don't we? I can move it. I'll flick it over to people. I was going to let you finish, and then. Oh. Okay. Then you can finish your eating and oh. being really messy. I need more chippies there. Maybe I'll come over there. Oh, no, no I'll read bring... questions. You can't see the questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just quickly move this. And you can just go over here. Mm, can just turn that off. No. Oh, yeah. And then... I was just going to move. Do you want to drop this down lower now or keep the same height? No, I think it's fine. Sorry? Sorry guys, intermission while I move this. Yeah, intermission. So <laughs> I'm going to move this over here. Oh my gosh, Jared. So it gets the both of us. Jared was talking about a football game and he meant to say half time and he called it intermission. <laughs> we were at family dinner with his dad and his oh, brother yeah, who were huge. Oh yeah, they would take intermission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> Is this, is this looking good? Yeah, it looks fine. Right, I'll put the corn chips there. Cool. I'll give me... How's that battery going? It's got two thirds left, I think. Oh. Um, uh, 46%. Yeah, that's fine. All right, there we go. Sorry, we're back, guys. You keep talking, I'm just stirring. I'm reading. <sighs> You got questions? Really yeah, how boring. does the chilli taste? It tastes absolutely sensational. It's so good. I wish I Everyone's going to hate on us so bad. I wish I could share it with you guys, but I cannot. <laughs> She's going to eat the whole... I cannot share it, unfortunately. It is all for me. It's really good, though. Maybe I'll be there in one second. I just need to get another scoop. I will... Where was I now? That's awesome. <laughs> Hank said it's 4.30 in the morning in Chicago and we're making them hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing Listen to us at 4.30 in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. 
dressing room. All right, I'll come over there. Hey guys, Billy here. Thank you so much for your content. If you moved to a new country and could only take your expertise and equipment with you, what would you do in the first month to get paid ASAP? Um, That's a good question. Depends on the country. I'm a bit lucky. I've already got work in a lot of countries. Mm. Um, all right, but if I did do this, uh, very. It's, it, all right, so I've got to talk about the industry I work in. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would do would be go have a meeting with the top agencies and let them know that for the next month I'm available 24-7 to shoot your models. Mm -hmm. It's a bit dark. I'll go fix, right. fix it. You fix it? Fix you broke it? it. Hello, um, so yeah, I'd go, say if I was dumped in, say, Berlin, um, I would firstly go to some of the top modeling agencies like Iconic and things like that, have a meeting with them, say to put them in my position, hey, I'm new to the country, I need to build up a clientele list and I need to sh shoot some of the local models because they're going to be what the clients are going to be using and I'm going to do this free of charge, I'm going to give you some real, every shot that I'm going to send you is going to be magazine cover quality. So they're not just going to be a happy stat, they're going to be a, sh a shot that the client's going to go, oh wow, that should be on a cover or that should be on a billboard. And there might only be four or five sh shots from a shoot. I'll do that, i have worked for about a month doing that type of stuff. And what that's going to do is all the clients, hopefully if I've done my job properly, number one, the models will start talking, the agency starts talking, I then will get connections with hair and makeups, get a network happening, yeah. I'll get things talking. So if a hair and makeup's with a shoot that's going bad, they could they say, hey, I was just working with this guy the other day and he's freaking awesome, he's new to the country. That word of mouth thing. Then what happens then is, the, because my look is my look, it's going to look different to whatever that other girl's going to, or that model's going to have in a folio. So when a client goes in and picks a model and goes, oh, I love this model. And who shot this picture? Whoever shot this picture, because it's so different to everything else she's done, that's the look we want for our company. You'd be surprised how quick that yeah. works. Yeah. That can work really, really quick. So it's, that would be my best advice, but this is based on the industry I work in. If I was, say, going to do fishing photography, I would get to that country, I would find the best fishermen in that country, I would contact them and say, hey, I want to do some free photography for you, um, when are you fishing next? I'll shoot it, then I would get find fishing blogs, Instagram pages, whatever, send them these awesome pictures because the only way I'm going to get booked is I need to be better or different to what they're seeing. And again, hopefully my work stands out enough that people go, hey, that's that river just around the corner and that's that fisher and we know him, but look at this picture. Uh. And hopefully they pick up, say, a fishing rod company or something like that or an ad agency who's looking at that stuff. But yeah. That was a good question. It was a good question. It's, it's really, really easy to say why well, you can't do something. You have to look at going positive, getting people to see your work. Mm. And the best way to get people to see your work is get it on the agency sites. And then anybody who's booking any girl on the agency is going to see your work. I mean, to be a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. I love that saying. Yeah, you've overused it a bit. No, I haven't. I used it once before in <laughs> my life. <laughs> This is good. You should do this more often. <laughs> Sorry for everybody out there. We don't have taste vision. <laughs> um, Sorry to hear us like chewing. This isn't an ASMR channel. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, think it just I can one. make an ASMR with me. <laughs> no, you're like, I hate it. It freaks me out. It's so gross. Warren would like to know what lighting setup do you use for fish? Fish? Yeah. Fish is in shooting fishermen or fish is in fish in fish tanks? I think maybe because you never shot fish in fish tanks, yeah. so I won't answer that one. Well. Um, you used to shoot fishes. Right, so when I worked, I was contracted to lifestyle magazines and fishing magazines. 
they'd have two really good well-known fishermen gurus in there what they did so I won't say two there might only be one and what I would use to do is if I didn't already know that fisherman <coughs> I'd have maybe a two or three hour lunch with him or a coffee we talk and I find out how he goes about doing what he does so why is the magazine wanting to use him why is he so good a fisherman what does he do what's the type of things he likes and what's the type of shots that he really likes and once I've worked that out the the ones that I used to work with a lot and especially say for trout fishing up the snowy river you know so it's central uh, it's not central Australia but it's in the mountains of Australia very very small rivers with very big fish in them that are very very spooky because that fish has lived in that bit of water all its life and all of a sudden <clears throat> there's a shadow over there I've never seen before so it won't eat so and because I was a fisherman myself I knew all this stuff so would I'd always have two-way radios and what I'd do I would find the type of the way that fisherman fished so if it was a wet fly fisherman which means underwater or a surface fisherman if you like to sight cast or whatever this is all going over your head but I'm just fascinated. I thought you just put the no. any thing fisherman in. out there who knows, especially fly fishing, knows what I'm talking about. So I'd hike ahead. Mine. I would find a feeding trout. I'd work out what they were feeding on. I would radio back to the fisherman and say, "I'm about four bends or five bends up from you. There's a big brown sitting underneath this wattle tree, and he's feeding on sn snowflake caddises. When you get come around the corner very carefully, stay to the left or the right hand side of the river." watch you'll see he's in the bubble line coming out of under the tree and i'm going to set up my camera in a position to i'll have two cameras set up i have a wide angle to get his casting shots his false casting shots but i could always go back and get that later my killer shot was my 70 to 200 all my 400 zoomed in where the fish was feeding and i was after that nose coming out of the water and taking the fly and the second that happened, I would then go on a motor drive on my wide angle with the fish jumping out of the water. Yeah. In the meantime, because I've worked out what the fish were feeding on, I've scouted the area a little bit. We didn't really care about the lighting. The fish just look pretty under any light. And nobody cares what the fisherman looks like. But when I'd shoot the fisherman, I'd always make sure the lighting was better. I would have scouted an area to do the fish shot. And we hated that meat eater fish shot with the blood coming out of the gills and they're holding him up like this. Because it was all catch and release. Barbaric. Yeah, so I'd find this beautiful pool of water, which the lighting was coming in nice, and we would carefully net the fish over that bit of water without hurting it. The fisherman would hold the fish by its tail in this beautiful bit of pool. I'd have a camera there and would drop one of the insects on the water Ooh. and I'd take a picture of this fish looking up saying, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't <laughs> kill me. But the insect sitting in front of its nose, everyone thinks that was a shot that we took, but we set that shot up. And the effort we went to was why I got booked a lot for the Ooh. fishing. I knew what fishermen wanted to see. So it's like fishing porn. Every fisherman wants to see that fish about to eat something and it's a really hard picture oh, to get, but when you set it up we could get that shot. For some reason my brain thought you meant like I meant like I thought you meant like fishing porn. Like you were like going fishing for porn. For porn? Well you said it's like fishing porn and I thought you meant like going fishing for How do you catch porn? I don't know, that's why I was confused. I was like, why? No, it's like I know, I pornography for fishermen. I know, I understand now. I just where my brain went. Anyway. I hope <laughs> that answer was it. I always answer really long, don't I? I know you do. You love to talk. You could talk underwater like Le Fish. Charles would like to know, as a portrait slash fashion photographer, how abstract can you be and have ever been yourself? Beck knows I keep pushing myself to be more what I want to do, but yeah. I hold myself back because models don't give me their guidelines clear. I'll only ever shoot a model to the guideline. Yeah. I would never ever push a model to do something they don't want to do. Every now and then if it's a girl I've been working with for a bit or a guy, 
I might say, can you trust me for one second, try this, we'll take a frame, have a look at it, you tell me if what you, you hate think. It, that's if fine. you hate it, it's deleted, we won't do it. Mm. But I'll never say, oh, this would look really good if your, your top fell down a little bit, and she goes, no, I don't like that. Oh, but if you did, I would never, ever... You've had that happen to me You've before. had that happen. So bad. I would never do it. I, I'm normally the other way. Quite often I say to the model, really, you want to do that? <laughs> So I'm normally, so th that's the way I prefer it to be. But when it comes down to how crazy you can be, have a look at Irving Penn. Mm. There is no such a not being, there's no such thing as too crazy. The, that if you can find people to work with who are happy to, so you have a, a, a connection between yourself, so it's you know, like a safety word, that they will go, they will say when well, no, I'm passing my safety zone, or you'll say no, that's too far. Mm. And you can be open and honest, and you can actually say, this would look so much better if we squeezed a tomato between your legs. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't think you're some weird, complete idiot. She goes, well, that could be cool, let's try it. Because they're on the same page as you. That's when you can actually create art. Because if you're a painter, you would have just painted it there. But as a photographer, we can't just paint it there. We need to have the mutual agreement from both parties that they're both into this idea as much as the other one. That was so sensational. What, my answer? No, it's chilly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, look, it's hard. I it's really just wish... spice. Even now, I really wish too much spice. No, just enough. Oh, yeah. Perfect amount of heat. Sorry, continue. You wish now. Um, right at the moment, I'd be better creator if I was a painter, because mm. I don't have anybody holding my hand. At the moment, with lockdown, I'm very limited without traveling. I'm not getting to work with some of the models that I need to work with to create some of my really... I've got these storyboards of stuff I want to do, but I need the right model for that, mm. who's going to be into that concept as much as I am. Yeah. And there's a girl up the snow at the moment, which I'm hoping we connect because I think she'll be right into my stuff. I think she will. I think she'll be yeah. a bit awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren said, do you know what other weird thing you can put in chili dark chocolate? Yeah, like we think one of a few of the recipes that you... We had cocoa in this. Oh yeah, it's got cocoa in it. That's so crazy. You wouldn't think I that. I do the other, that dessert you said, that chocolate, whatever you called it. Pudding? No, the one you saw in my... Pudino. Pudino. Yeah. That has cayenne pepper in it. Oh. So it's dark chocolate and cayenne pepper. I think Lint bought out a chocolate that had chili in it once. Oh, chili chocolate's amazing. Ugh. No, it's amazing. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Mm, yeah. The person that loves anchovies can't stand olives. Yeah, they're totally different tastes. Mm. They are so different flavours. Just because they're salty doesn't mean they taste the same. Uh, olives are gross. Did you find a question? Uh, yes, any advice for someone who's been shooting 35 mil for the past decade and wants to transition to medium format? First, ask yourself why. Then when you've come up with your reason why, then just do it. Yeah, fair. Medium format, everything's slower, harder, less forgiving. Um, but... I don't know, there's just this beautiful sweet zone that I like. Um, I normally say, if you think of a sports car like something, not a super sports car, but just a, a sports car that's nice and they're easy to drive, mm -hmm. they're a little bit fail safe because they're not too aggressive, and then you jump into a high-end Ferrari, you're going to wrap it around a tree the first corner. Mm. And it's because... Um, once you get to more the pinnacle of something, they're a lot harder to drive properly. You've got to really, really understand your skills. And I'm not putting myself on a pedestal because I've been shooting this for years and I didn't understand my skills and it took me many years to not wrap my Hasselblad around a tree. <laughs> yeah. But is it, it is not, it's, yeah, medium format, slow, hard, it's limiting, but then when you get everything right and you can learn to live with it, you'll love it. Yes. What is the do? What is it? 35 mil is that film? No, 35 mil is the size of the sensor. It was oh. the size of a film, and medium format's a different size of film. Oh, okay. 
Because I see a few people say that that's what they're shooting. Wait, did Chanel is? No, she's there. I don't want the dog to come outside. Um, I'll look for it at question. You know, I'm, I'm reading them now. You're salted really chocolate is... Tonight. Salted chocolate is also great. I love salted caramel. Yeah, salted chocolate's good. Yeah, salted caramel as well is bloody delicious. Why don't you try anchovy and chocolate? Ooh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> what are you giggling at? You ask a question. Me? There isn't any. Well, isn't there? No, I think we're caught up. Oh. If you guys have questions, please ask them. Or if, d if Beck deleted your question earlier, please answer. I didn't delete it. The little night bot went through and deleted them. Um. Maybe they just give me a chance to eat. Yeah, you can eat. You guys can just watch Peter eat while I stand out here. What else we could talk about? Sorry? I don't know what else. I'm kind of in a food coma. That was so tasty. You guys should all like actually make this. I swear it's like the best thing you'll ever eat. Is Chanel still in there? Is she? What are we having for dessert? Um, wine. <laughs> alcohol or mm. wine. <laughs> we always say that at, um, if we're out at a restaurant and they come around with a dessert menu, I just point to my glass of wine and I'm like, no, nah, this is dessert. <laughs> My internet stopped working, that's why I don't have any Anchovies are not chocolate, what's wrong with the world? <laughs> Beck loves her anchovies. Is Chanel still in there? Have I been to Brazil? Yeah, I have absolutely loved the place, but I was pretty scared while I was there. Yeah. It's amazing, amazing models. You've got, you guys have got some amazing models there. And the scenery, incredible, but oh my God, is it dangerous there. I was in... Um, Rio and we're at the Coca Cabana about two hours after a, a group of thugs went through and robbed every single person oh on the God. beach and all the police had been paid to stay away for 10 minutes and you know they threatened if you couldn't pull your ring off your finger they were going to cut your finger off and they literally robbed every single person on the beach in that 10 minutes. That's so scary. Yeah it's and the amount, especially there, every street corner had a copper sitting there with his lights flashing. The cop would be just standing next to the car. Jeez. But I don't think they'd chase anybody if anything went wrong. But absolutely uh, enjoyed the time I was there. Uh, I only did um, a place, I think it's called Cupertino, um, uh, San Polo and Rio. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'd love to come back one day, but we can't go anywhere at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm coming back um, in. Dark chocolate and single malted whiskey. Now, there we go. There we go. Definitely into that. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Okay. My internet stopped working. That's why I didn't have any questions. I think oh, it's yeah, working. Was out no. uh, you just want to have a break. No. She does this at the studio. Sorry, brain not working. I can't work for a minute. That's all right. I will. What is my favourite Aussie wines? It's really hard because a wine... See, I love Eden Valley I like, Hunter Valley I like, Barossa Valley I like, <laughs> Margaret River I like. I live not far from the Yarra Valley. Um, and because of, of wine, especially n nowadays, the good wines are not so much a blend to match what we did last year. It's what the vintage created and <coughs> there's only 10,000 bottles and once they're sold, that's they it, you can't drink it again. And they're the wines I like better, um, like single malt whiskies or single farm tequila. You find the right year and oh my God, it's the best ever, but you only got a chance to weigh one bottle. Um, yeah. I can't actually name, it's a, a, there's lots of different wineries. It's a, in the Rutherglen Glen area, see, I love some of the fortifieds that came out of Brown, uh, f from Morrison Brothers. And oh, there's another one up there that I really liked. But yeah, uh, it d really depends on the year. Dr hot years, dry years. We've had a couple of bad years for wines with the fires. So yeah, the smoke destroyed the taste of the wines. So. Where was I? I, I past saw and present. Who's your favorite past and present? Um, well, I don't really look at other photographers. No, I don't look at 
what I'd call portrait photographers. Mm. They're more commercial fashion or fashion advertising. But you know, Peter Lindbergh, Helmut Newton, she uh, wants Abaddon, um, so even Alan von Unworth, amazing work that she is. In fact, they're liking her more and more. Uh, there's just so many. Uh, uh, Vincent Peters, friggin' I know, it's, I'll put it in the wine basket. There's two, <laughs> there's different for different reasons. It's do I like my son or daughter more? I can't <laughs> <laughs> do I want a hand or a foot cut off. No. No. Do you grow pepper plants? No. No. <laughs> in Australia, you can, but I don't. We no. can't. I can't grow anything here. We're like in the forest and there's not much sun. Um, is sea salt not good on protection in cooking? You use kosher salt, don't you? I use kosher salt, yeah. Yeah. Kosher yeah, salt? Yeah, I, I put a decent, I put about a tablespoon of kosher salt in there. I just, sometimes to get that salty taste, it becomes too salty. And I found, especially in, say, tomato sauce, a couple of anchovies in there, you won't get the fish flavour at all, but adds this nice little flavour enhancing that salt's supposed to do without making it too salty. Anyway, it's a fussy me thing. It's a fussy I shoot thing. medium format. <laughs> <laughs> Gruta says that they look, they look forward to every time for whenever we have new content. Hopefully we've got some cool stuff coming up soon, I think. Um, as in photos or videos? I think videos. I don't videos. Know. Well, we've, got, we've got part two and part seven. <laughs> hey, we've got... Got some cool stuff. Part two of Abby coming up, yep. which is cool. There's some really um, and well, I'll definitely do. I'll put part seven up, which will be shot yesterday. Was it part five? Was it part five? Was yeah, part, part five. five. <laughs> Only because Abby pushed me way ahead of what I would have done on the second shoot with her. She was awesome. So I decided yesterday. this was part five, and she was really, really good. We got some great pictures and. Oh, no, you're definitely taken to like three levels above. She's come up so quick. So awesome. And hopefully when I edit the video up, it gives, you can see how this transition happens so quickly with her that she just got it. Yeah, she's awesome. Have you ever been to or worked in Bulgaria? They have amazing no. models and in general beautiful women. Yeah, no, beautiful women, but never been there. No, could be cool though. Isn't that where Rara is at the moment? Yeah, Rara's not far from there. Cool. That's cool. John is hungry now. Do we deliver to New York? <laughs> <laughs> we could. It might be a bit cold, though. <laughs> Don't know what condition it would arrive in. Uber Eats are in New York, aren't they? Yeah, but we're not. <laughs> we might have to go through a COVID test first. <laughs> uh, what is your favourite picture? Don't have of one. mine? Yeah. I don't know. They just said, what's your favourite picture? They didn't specify. Um, From Victor. All right, all right, so you get asked that quite a bit. There's favorite, the favourite pictures of each model. Yeah. So I've got a favourite picture of this silly thing. I've got a, a favourite picture of Tanya and Zoe and all hmm. of those. But you don't have just one favourite one? Nah, it's like, do I like my... Yes. Sir. The three dogs, which one's... The, which, which is your favourite? Yeah, it's really, really hard because it's they've all got a different meaning. I think a meaning of life picture is pretty still really relevant to me. We can't show it because it's got boobs in it. It's got boobs in it, so yeah, YouTube, YouTube will just go, ta ta. They are ta ta. Got. Have you got. No, we don't, you don't have any moonshine, do you? Moonshine? Yeah. Um, I got moonshine bourbon, but it's mm. a bought one, it's not one I made. Right. Uh, what is the well, most. You bought it in Orlando's. Orlando's. Oh, that's right. What is the most input from Hank? What is the most important concept for aspiring photographers to throw out the window to grow as a creator? The most important skill to keep. Um, <laughs> camera club rules. It don't apply rules. Don't look at your picture and apply other people's thinking to your picture. Yeah. You've really got to go look at the picture that. Yeah, in fact, the very best thing, the very, very best thing, and I've never said this before, so it's new, is take a picture that you're never going to show anybody else and do it the way you like and never show anybody. 
that's what every picture should be. It shouldn't, it should be what you, you really, really like. And it might have things in there that you're gonna say, all these people are gonna hate on me for this or do this. But just do that picture and don't show anyone, then enjoy that picture. Then next time you pick up a camera, that's what you do over every picture mm. and then show the world. Because really we've, we've got, everyone has. Once you go on social medias, there's all these people that think that instead of them spending time on their own photography and their own skills and that, they feel it's so much better just to spend, waste their time Telling contradicting you. other photographers yeah. what they should, should have done or shouldn't have done. Whereas they would have been so much better putting that time and effort into making themselves yeah, right. better. Yeah. So. Shouldn't bring people down. It, it, yeah, it doesn't. And the people that make these comments or the people you think you need to impress will never buy your work anyway. Yeah. So they're really not going to ever be your client. And if the, another thing I use to say a lot is if you love this particular band and this particular band's album, there'll be one song on that album you think that was the dud on the album. You're not going to go tell them. You're not going to send them a friggin... You're not going to post them a letter saying, why did you record this song? It is shit. Because there'll be someone sitting next to you saying, that's the best song on the album. I hate the rest of the album. That is their best song. So it's the eye of the beholder. Everybody is. And you as an artist is the eye of the beholder. Everybody else has to work out what the what you're trying to do. Mm. Warren bought some of the gospel whiskey, but the Solera version isn't great. And had to get the American with you. You've got the I've gospel. Got both. Yeah. Um, yeah, the gospel are like the best. The Solera's good in an old fashion, and I use it in the blend with a Syriac or something, bourbon. And they blend really well together in an old fashion. Mm. Clef would like to know if you ever shot food stuff. Food stuff, yeah, I shot for. Uh, oh, what was their name? Oh, what was that called? It was like these. It's a Greeky dish, I think. It's like these food in between two pieces of like pastry and they're flat like pancakes. Gos Goslame? Goslame, yeah I shot oh. for two different companies who did Goslame so I did all so their young. work. Uh, I did coffee. Oh yeah. I did a lot of work for... Shot to harm with food. You <laughs> shot donuts <laughs> and Nutella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, not lots of food, I've done a couple of restaurants but I like that's a whole new skill on its own and if I did it long enough, I could get really good at it, but it's not really a passion. No. I'd eat the food before it. And most of the time, the food's cold, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's not really. Well, we went to a restaurant a little while ago, and we got talking to the owner, and he asked, and we found out that Peter was a photographer and stuff, and he asked if Peter would take food photography for him, and I think he told him he's better off just using his iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it because his restaurant was really cool, mm. Put it into portrait mode yeah, with the ambient light and your cool fall off. That's what people don't want to see technically correct. They want to see emotive yeah, photos. They want to see a delicious burger. They want, yeah. Not every sesame seed lined up in perfect <laughs> harmony. I like watching the videos of like the secrets of how they do food photography though. It's pretty interesting. Oh, like yeah. ice creams actually mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah, there's lots so of So cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah. don't cook the meat because it shrinks. You're only allowed to use what was used to make it. So just by burning lines in the meat, so oh, it looks like it's cooked. I didn't know you were that, mm, interesting. Uh, Stefan said that you provide so much information and insight in your videos, it's hard to ask you something you haven't covered so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter has no secrets. No, no. no. Uh, I, it's like if you're in a, a race and your car is better than everybody else's car. So you're now Lewis Hamilton. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I want to see everybody in equal things to be able to create. And if I'm going to win a race, I want to be racing people with these same toys. Mm. Because to me, I didn't win otherwise. That's fair. And what's that mix? Siberia's dip? I don't. I don't know what that is. I'm really sorry. So what do you? Is that I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what the dip is. I'm. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Uh, Warren says anchovies are great to put in the bin. That is incorrect. Anchovies are amazing. <laughs> I love anchovies. Be Bex says olives are a great thing to put in the bin. Yeah, olives and mushrooms <laughs> can hop in the bin. Anchovies can hop in my belly. 
Nesta said that they've just woke up and it's six in Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what are we shooting today? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, Stefan, I'm not sure if, I think Rara's in Greece, but she's not far. I can't remember the name of the town, but yeah, she's her, somewhere. her partner, her partner's brother has all of a sudden blown up as this massive director and just did, what was it? Um, the Hitman's, Hitman's Bodyguard's wife. wife. So that's Rara's partner's brother. Now, Rara's partner's been a screenplay writer and a director, but pretty much low-key. Nobody's found him, but all of a sudden the brother went big. So now they've filmed. This company's gone, oh, that's his brother. Let's grab him because we can't get the brother. And Rara's off somewhere in Greece mm. filming a movie. They're mm. filming over there. A, a big Just budget movie. Boats, so, so. And just lounging by the pool. And, and yeah. It looks so horrible, Rara. <laughs> Yeah, so she, yeah, I've lost, I've lost all my models. So, so oh, it's not hush hush anymore. Tisha is pregnant. She's due this month. Oh my God, yeah. She got stuck in Germany for a while, so we didn't see her for a while. But she got pregnant. She got a beautiful partner. So, we've lost her as a model. T Tanya's doing her hmm stuff, and Rara's <laughs> over there, and Tahan had a baby, baby. so we lost Tahan. <laughs> and Beck's gonna have a baby next, and I'll have to find someone to replace Beck. We've got new models though. We've got, yeah, we've got some, we've got some, new we've got some good new models coming up. Yes. Uh, have you tasted any first to fifth grown growth vintage Bordeaux? B Bordeaux, Latour, nope. Lafitte. No. Not. I'm getting bad with my brain. It sounds like I should be, but <laughs> I haven't. Probably a bit good. Uh, have you shot with the new Fuji medium format cameras? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry, I've got nothing against them. It's just a... Have you driven the latest, um, what's a new car? The latest Mazda. Why haven't you driven the latest Mazda? You should be driving it. You follow, it's, it's that thing that yeah. I'm happy with, I'm shooting with, so I don't go around looking for anything else. And I nothing against Fuji at all. So don't, everyone reads into it. You're, I think Fuji has, it's like the Fuji club or you're not. I think I'm, the, I'm in the not. Yeah. I don't know, but it's it's that thing. I've never actually. Oh, sorry. I had one of the little Fuji. I think they were called an X10 or an X100 little point and shoot mirrorless thing, which fit in the pocket. Beautiful. I couldn't take a freaking picture with it. It's the only Fuji I've owned, and I don't hold Fuji against it. It just wasn't the right camera for me. Um, but I haven't shot with the latest Canon, the latest Nikon, the latest Pentax, the latest. There's so many cameras I haven't shot with. It's because I'm happy with what I'm. Shooting. Yes. Oh, Nestor also said that you're great, but I am so lovely and funny. I am. I'm not that lovely. No, I am lovely. <laughs> you haven't <laughs> seen her at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> there is no loveliness there. If she doesn't get a coffee, your hand just goes missing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say, good morning. <laughs> I'm not that bad anymore. Anymore. I was bad. I'm all right now. But I think I'm funny. I'm not that funny. Sometimes I'm funny. I told a really good joke to Peter today. Yeah, but you got it from somebody else. No, no, but yours. <laughs> I still told you. <laughs> All right, well, while I fill up, you can see if anybody else laughs. Okay. Oh, the wait, pressure's should... on. Are you going to go pull ball with the tagline? Hmm? No, don't worry. You're too young. I don't get it. Basically, my friend posted a status saying that they were really happy that everyone's on board with the current let's get vaccinated because they saw two people vaccinating themselves under a bridge <laughs> in a questionable suburb in Melbourne. <laughs> I thought it, I think he stole it from someone, but I thought it was really funny. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> if you get the joke, you get it. But I'm not going to explain it. Um, Your chilli pot's coming along well. Coming along well? Yeah, and you and Jared have got a lot of eating to do. Oh, we will. Uh, do some Hell's Kitchen series shows. We could Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Imagine me and you like doing a cook-off. That would be funny. No, Hell's for Hell Studio. What? Hell Studio. Do a photography version of Hell's Kitchen. That'd be funny. That'd be really funny. We should do Especially something. with me on board. There'd be too many tears. <laughs> too many tears. Hey, yeah, that's while, while we're finishing up. Any of you guys have got something you'd like to see us doing videos? Seriously, because we don't know what you're actually looking for. We know what we... We just do what we do. We do what we do and 
Yeah, we just stumble across things like, oh, this could be cool, let's show this. Yeah. But we could be missing a point what people are actually wanting Except to Except for things like architecture and... Oh, yeah, you don't know. do that. <laughs> Sorry, teach me how to drive a racing car. I've never driven a racing car before. Yeah, well, teach me. Yeah. Yeah, so only within the genre <laughs> I'm working in because... You don't do landscapes. It's, you're better off to find someone who specialises in mm. architecture or specialises in food and they yeah. are the people that will teach you how they've got to where they've got within their industry. Yeah. My, where I am at the moment is where I want to be in my industry and it doesn't mean it's going to sh um, suit everybody because my industry's died, the fashion industry right. is like... Well, it died even before COVID and there is signs that coming back, I saw Alexander McQueen's last, last campaign, Dior's last campaign were really, really cool. It was back like what used to be done in the 90s and 2000s, so nice edgy, arty, uh, not appropriate. <laughs> They turned off the woke meter. <laughs> it wasn't, there was no um, reset word used. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. But yeah, so in, in any time, it doesn't matter, you don't have to, now if you can send us an email, you can put it in comments at any time. If you think of something that would help you improve. But to me, and I'm going, I've got a couple of rants <laughs> I want to record very soon, which is, why is that spinning? This is not enough mine, it's off oh, yours, so oh. it's fine, yours looks fine. Oh, did you take yours outside and lost your no. connection again? No, I didn't move, I went oh. to fill up my wine. Um, I think some of the, the, the bigger, the hardest areas of photography has been creative and some of the business sides of things, uh, what camera settings you're using and what lights you're buying are like nothing things. It's like I did with a knife before. Mm. I can cut an onion with a sharp knife or a blunt knife or a expensive knife or a cheap knife. That was it, a really cool thing you did. I if you guys know, missed I it, you should go clever. back to the start when Peter was chopping up onions and listen to what he says. I'm cold. I thought I was going to look cool and take that off, but it's cold. Um, <coughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, but, yeah, all, always interesting. I, I, I spend a little time each night um, going down rabbit holes on YouTube um, expanding and reopening my own brain and I've had some really really good fun just listening to some rants from people and one of them I don't even know what his name was he was just boring sitting there in this boring room with one single camera angle he's very mono but what he was saying I was just going you're so friggin right like I related to everything he said and I said I've really got to look at some of the things I do more in the eyes of what you've just said and things like that have then inspired me to make those changes and Becca's definitely seen a change in the last month haven't you? Yes I have. What are you doing? Oh no I was just checking I oh. forgot to check way before we've been live for two hours and I forgot to check oh. if I had the D until I checked and I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't gotten the stripe. I, <laughs> I just remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> That's professional. Not. So professionals. Um, but yeah, so yeah, please, we are always looking for um, topics. Uh, yeah, we've got to do more outside. Definitely got to do more location yeah. work. So I've got so many tricks on location and lighting without taking any lights or reflectors. So yes. we have to do that. We will. And we're a bit busy doing a new little, what are we going to call it? It's going to be a five week, it's going to be a five day course or a five know. week I'm course. Saying. We're doing a, a little thing where we're boxing up what we would normally do. Well, a bit, it's more than what we'd normally do in the five day workshop, but it's trying to box up a video set to cover what we do in a crash. Yes. So if you're on Inspire, course. if you're on Inspire, you'll get access to it, but we're also thinking of just selling it as yeah, like a package just as well. Sell it as a package. So you can have it. But yes, that's what we're thinking of doing. Um, Michael said they're trying to subscribe to all artists because they're trying to remove our comics and all other types of artists, including video game designers, art. I haven't found that. I don't think people are... Creators are getting what silent. What was the start of that? So they, they've, been, they've been subscribing to all artists because they're trying to remove our comics and all other types of artists, including video game designers, art. I haven't found artists are getting muted. Yeah, but where's he saying that's happening? I don't know. I oh, didn't say. Didn't say. Um, well, we are getting muted in a way. Facebook have decided if you you say the word covert, nobody sees it. Like there is a fair bit of. Hmm. Um, but that's not an artist. Artist isn't no. going to like. 
No, there's censorship happening, but it's more on your conspiracy or the people being very vocal about things. Mm. Well, we've had we've had that happen for ages. Yeah. We can't show real art. And it's only recently that, say, someone like David Bromley can have a breast in a painting. Yeah. Like someone put up a picture of the statue of David and it got deleted by Facebook really? a few years ago. It's got his little willy. Yeah, he's got his <laughs> what is his little, little willy. <laughs> But it, yeah, it's it's really hard. But, but that's really hard too. What do you class as a art boob, and what do you class as a pornography boob? Yeah, so that's a really hard line. So it's just so easy to say, "Oh, we just don't lab boobs." Lab boobies, yeah. Um, photography of food. Yes, no, nah, we. Yeah, no. Peter doesn't do <laughs> photography. Photography, sorry. I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Charles would like to know, do you get wilder or more reasonable with age? Remember, do, get, do I get wilder? Do you get wilder or more reasonable with age? I remember this Megan Young shooting about 10 years ago. It was quite decadent. Um, I think I've been forced into mellowing, which is really Affecting. fighting me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing a pushback against it because I... If I'm going to be a mellow photographer, I'm going to retire and might take up fishing again. <laughs> you know, I, I've really got it. I'm really in Beck scene. Like I said, I'm doing, I've started re-editing my old photos to more my modern look. Not changing much, but just getting rid of colour. <laughs> um, and getting the, the, the sort of the bit of more of the feel I want. And... It's really invigorated me to get back to shooting what I really, really love. And it's stuff that's a little bit controversial, a little bit... You c can't just look at it as a photo. There's a story. Yes. Yeah, like the Donna... The blog. Donna series and awesome. a lot of that stuff is the stuff I love doing. Peter, Peter put up a new blog the other day. So if you guys want to head over to his blog, it is not safe for work though. Just a heads up. Yeah, my blog is a place I can just post whatever I yes, freaking like because of. I own the site. Yes, it's not safe for work, but it's a really cool series, so if you want to go check it out, head over there and have a look at that. You know, it was shot in 2006. And so wow. Hank, Hank would like to know, the, he said that, uh, I know you love the black and white look, but do you ever play with coloured RGB lights as an edge or kick up? We have a video on it, shooting yeah. with me. Um, what do we call it? Shooting with LEDs? Or? Yeah, I think so. We did yeah. A, yeah, we did one recently. Yeah, it's a recent one. I personally, that's not my thing, but it was fun to do. Was I did a really nice black and white with Natasha. Oh, yeah. Using them. Yeah. Which we were going to do a tutorial on, but Natasha got the job and the other men available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you got a check mark video, so you all get paid on YouTube areas? No. No, we... No, Check you'd... what video, which and who. <laughs> no, I'm really confused. <laughs> That's <laughs> Sorry. Best um, Mickey, we'd like to know how hard it is to find clients for photo editing retouching services. It's really easy. We get like 30 get emails so a week like offering services. I don't use them. Seriously, it is do a search on um, Facebook or Google and you will get a trillion services contacting you without you doing anything more than doing a search. True. They'll come up in your feed, they'll come up everywhere. Um, looking at junk mail, uh, sorry, the other thing is if they need to know that you're a photographer. So a lot of ours come through our photography page. Mm. So, um, but there's lots and lots out there. There's a lot of big name photographers, like I'm talking really big name photographers mm. that have all their wedding photos edited in India. No. Oh. Never edits a single thing. You know the one I'm talking about? I think so. That's interesting. I didn't know that. What? Put your foot out and slide it back a bit. Yeah, I yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so yeah, all his, all his weddings and people paying 20,000 plus, everything's edited in India. Didn't know that. Interesting. A lot of photographers are doing it for that commercial work because they're not, their style is in the way they shot it and they just want the cleanest, cheapest edit to finish it. No. Yeah. And not selling to photographers or anyone, selling to people who aren't photographers. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Kiki, all Kiki's work. 
She doesn't edit it? No. Oh, All edited in India. Oh. Oh. Um, Instagram has no general problem with art burbs and drawings and paintings, explicit and porny stuff as well, but there's a photo in the corner of a nipple showing has accounts in the doghouse. Yeah. I've got friends who have been deleted because they post like photos, like nothing's showing, but there'll be like a kind of raunchy photo and then they'll say they've got an OnlyFans link in bio and Instagram it's like box their account. Just because yeah. they say they have an OnlyFans. Account, account, yeah. Ridiculous. It's, this is where um, we need another platform to come on that still is strict. So we've got to keep kids safe and we yeah. can't have child porn. We can't have all those horrible things that would happen if there wasn't censorship. But then we've got to have it as an independent that has not got a political view behind why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, Michael said hello from Las Vegas. I love Vegas. My dignity's left there. there. My dignity's somewhere lying around on oh, the street. That's street. right. You <laughs> ended up in hospital, didn't you? <laughs> can't wait for us to come back to the US. We'll definitely be attending We can't election. wait to. Oh my God. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for food. <sighs> I just can't wait. I can't. Which we're going to do. Next time we go to the US, we're doing Texas. Texas yeah. I know. You're so cool. I cannot wait. We might have to sneak Boston in. Boston. Boston. Boston, I think so, yeah. Boston. That'd be good. Well, yeah. Wait, is that Chicago? Oh, it's Chicago, sorry, yeah. not Boston. Yeah. So the Bean. The Bean, yes. Yes. It's interesting. But we're not having deep dish. No, it looks odd. I mean, I think I have to try it, but it just looks odd. Uh, you mentioned a while back doing a dance shoot YouTube video. Did lockdowns get in, yes. in the way of that? Yes, they well, did. Well, yes and no. We had the dance to come down to Melbourne. Everything was set, and then she got sick. Uh, yeah. Remember, she we had to bail on the day because she got sick the day yeah. before. Yeah. And then she went back to Sydney, and then <laughs> we've all been in lockdown since. <laughs> so yeah, she. That old chestnut. So when and oh, our other dancer, friggin' Jackson, stuck in Sydney. <laughs> he can't Sydney get out of well. Sydney. Everyone's stuck in Sydney. <laughs> Lizzie's now stuck in. Uh, Brisbane. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it's just, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll do it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Definitely we'll get there. do an, another dance video. Yeah. I love shooting dance. Yes. Uh, where was that? Wine or whiskey? Do you drink? Well, I'm drinking wine. Peter's I'll go whiskey. It's over oh, wine. Wines. I like wines. Oh, <sighs> Right now we've got a hundred viewers watching. We do. I can't believe it. We've got over a hundred people watching now. Hello, everyone. Oh, do you feel important? I do, kind of. A they're all bit. watching you. So every single move you make, they're watching. That's okay. That's the point of a live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're no fun anymore. No. <laughs> you would have crawled under the table and freaked two years ago. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm different now. I'm used to this now. We do this all the time now. And my little dog's barking at something. I don't think they can hear that. Oh, can't they? No, it's a bit far away. We can hear it, though. Um, well, they are waiting for wisdoms. Or, I'm reading. Or, or you're reading. Yeah, even hosting websites and platforms like Squarespace, Squarespace, Patreon, etc. have owners' boards, so even they're not all sunshine and... Yeah, Blake's talking about posting stuff, I think. Well, yeah, it's... it's yeah, your, your web page is fine. My web, yeah, but see, my oh, I don't think I'm restricted on my mm. web page. I'll be, I'm restricted by law. Yeah. So I can't put anything up that breaks law. Yeah. Oh. You don't and take anything that breaks law. I know, but there's lots of people out there that do. Yeah. That's so what like the dark that crazy idiot that did the killings in New Zealand and streamed it live. Yeah. So there's sites that maybe an uh, independent site would never have pulled it down. Yeah, it's called the dark web. The dark web, yeah. It's crazy. I kind of want to get onto it, but I don't know how to. No, no, you don't. Oh, you don't right? want to get onto it, trust me. Oh, I've never been on there, but I know how you would cope with I'm it. I'm just not curious. Well. Yeah, you're that's very so curious. Sad. I like little kids. Um, it's amazing to talk to us. Thank you. That's all we're we do is talk. We're just at the <laughs> We're not actually giving you guys anything. Because she <laughs> won't so ask me questions. I don't have anything to <laughs> ask. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like there's not, there's people are watching us so we have like, this is the most people we've had all stream. That is, I and think they like it. That's maybe because we're not eating. Maybe. <laughs> or they're just, we're they idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to watch him for the dumbness factor. 
<laughs> I would. I do watch that. You now. watch that? I, yeah, I know you do. I love watching it. Actually, I've got a new video I need to watch. New video? I said, what video is that? Oh, it's someone that I'm subscribed to that I need oh. to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got excited. Anyway. I get hard to get excited and I've started watching The Boys. So if anybody hasn't watched The Boys, I'm not into superheroes. I'm not into any of that shit. But the first seven minutes I've gone, what just happened? I can't believe what just happened. Anna, Anna, Anna told us about that because yeah. of her heavy Russian accent. I kept thinking she was saying the voice because she told me that she'd oh, auditioned for the, the voice. voice. And then she kept saying the boys, but I kept hearing it because she, the boys. And I was like, is she saying the voice? <laughs> like. Oh, I can say one little bit, which isn't killing anything. So it's only one little scene that doesn't tie to anything else. But they've gone to like, a, these two guys have gone to like this uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. But it's all like this Soaps Anonymous. The soaps are what they call these superheroes. Okay. And one of the guys there, and they're talking about, you know, someone's back, she can't walk again because of one of the soaps, what they did or what, whatever. Mm. And this guy's there and he had sex with one of the soaps. It's a nice lady and she orgasmed him and froze and his dick broke off. <laughs> you just don't oh, expect this. It is so left of centre. I figured... Okay. I've really got into it because you don't even know what the next line's going to be because it just goes so weird. It sounds very interesting. Anyway, if you hate it, don't blame me, but <laughs> I find it really hard to find anything that can get me off my computer yeah, and until the TV and only from a model mm -hmm. saying, give this a look and uh, this is going to be a piece <laughs> of crap. And I went onto YouTube because on YouTube that actually has <laughs> the first seven minutes and I watched the first seven minutes of the first episode, and that's when I've gone, I need to watch this show. This is just so wrong. I'm liking AP Bio. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's a good show. I recommend that. Uh, uh, apparently, I don't want to get on the dark web. I just want to see. No, you don't. That's cute. No, no, no. It's really, really, really horrible. Mm, no, it's because it's real. Like snuff films? Yeah, and rape just, and... Oh, I don't want to see that. Child, you oh, don't want... I hope I don't want to get on the dark web. You, why do you want to watch? <laughs> I don't want to watch it. I just want to see what's on there. You like watching public freakouts. It's so left of centre in public freakouts. I love, watching, watching, public I love freak watching public freakouts. I love it. It's so much. It's even more satisfying if I see a public freakout in real life. Like if I'm just at the supermarket and I see a Karen just going at the shopping centre workers, I'm like, oh. I just kind of stand there and walk really slowly with my trolley. <laughs> Anyways, I'm weird. But you don't handle it when I do a Karen next to you in public. Oh, it's not because I like it when it's not me. <laughs> I love drama that doesn't involve me. That's perfection. I like being the Karen next to the bag. <laughs> no, I don't like to be at all. Don't be a Karen. Uh, sorry for any sorry. Karens listening to us. <laughs> We're not having a go at you. Any clues to set up and be able to shoot tests with models from agencies or with higher profiles? I think it comes, I think Peter said this before, you've got to kind of be on the same level, kind of, or? Oh, look, most agencies, it's, uh, I can only talk about my experiences overseas and in Australia, and there's a lot of difference, so I don't know where you're based. In Australia, the agencies, number one, they want to see who your crew is, who's your hair, your makeup, what's your storyboard, who's the stylist, all of this stuff. And you know, if you've got all of these people involved, you're, it's really hard to create something that's you because the hairdresser and the, the makeup artist want this look and the stylist wants them to wear these clothes and might be clashing completely to the idea of what you had with that model. A lot of times with agencies that know us, we, or we do two things, we either just have <laughs> a blank sh sheet, pretty much. These are the pictures that we're going to create. And we send it to every agency, same pictures, yeah. and they're happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not going to create those pictures at all, but they're nice, safe agency pictures that we know the agency's going to like. And they go, oh yeah, this girl's folio is a bit weak, this girl's folio is a bit weak. We'll send them to you. Um, I don't like the hair, look, nothing against you hair and makeup people, but when I'm working with a model and they, the model comes into the studio, then goes into two to three hours of hair and makeup, they come out dead. Yeah. They're gone. They're no good for me whatsoever. And they often come out not looking like what they look like because you wanted to show how good you were showing everyone the makeup. It's not... We, I want someone who's going to do... make the model look better. Not. I don't want to be able to... I want anybody to say, oh, nice blue eyeshadow. 
He's a good makeup artist. You can't see the eyeshadow yeah. because it's so well blended. You're just going, oh, look at her eyes. Look at them pop. Yeah. You don't even notice what the makeup is. Anna's going to do my makeup on Sunday. Right, is she? Yes. Change the subject. Nobody knows who Anna is. And yes, they do. She's in heaps right. of videos. All right. Anyway, so back on something that's actually helping them rather than you're having your makeup done by Anna. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so to get with agents, yeah, so hair so, makeup ruin everything. So, but that's what they want. But pretty much when I was overseas, my uh, assistants tend to have a very set, this is what we're looking for, this is what we're going to do. Here is an example of our, or here's a link to our work. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, yeah, some of the models they sent me, oh, I can't believe some of the, <laughs> how high end a model, but they wanted my look in their folios. Yeah. And yeah, th there's two models especially that are way above my pay grade. Um, well, I must say not. I, I fit with them straight away because I didn't have a clue who they were and I only found out later on that, oh, <laughs> yeah. You're, quite <laughs> <famous>. <laughs> You're super, super famous. No one didn't even pick up on this. Well. But it's because the agency liked the storyboard I sent along, which was just basically in line with what I normally shoot. Mm. And we sent the same storyboard to every agency. And they a link to our photos so they could see the quality of the work that they were going to get. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of things we'd always write in the email. And one of them was. Wait, I wasn't listening. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will finish it because she's <laughs> what did, completely. What did you ask? She also is still thinking about her makeup being done on Sunday. I was reading a question. What did you ask? What is one of the standard things we put in the email to agencies that no. the agencies love? We only shoot to the models a, to comfort a comfort zone. level, yeah. Level. Yeah. So we make it very clear that the o we only work to within a model's comfort level. Yeah, we level. never we never do nude only to implied and only ever to a model's comfort, comfort level. level. Yeah. Yes. So I hope hope that helps. It's, yeah. Agencies are hard because they really they're there just to get money off people. Yeah, it's like a supermarket of models. Supermarket of models and they don't want to give you something for nothing without getting 10 times something. back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Wendell learned so much with us and they love the episode where we teach the model not to change her face expressions. Is that Abby? I think it's Abby, but yeah. wait till they see the next one. Oh, sorry. So no, it's not two to come. Yeah. Yeah. Not the next one. Not the next one's still a one, really good one. It's a lot more of my tricks, but my but God, is she stepped up another level now. She's so awesome. I am the model finder. Most well-known photographers who shoot with bronze colour use the paras, but not you. Why? I have a para. Yeah, but you don't really shoot with it that much. Yeah, but I have the massive para. Yeah. 3.3. I know. Yeah. Overcompensating. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you stop looking. Um, um, what was it? You've lost me. No, so no yeah, why don't you shoot there's with There's a lot of, a lot of them, a lot of them use the para 88s and whatever it is. I... I'm not a fan of it for myself. It's not my look. I'd rather an Octa. Yeah. I'd much rather a uh, beauty dish or an Octa. I, it's just uh, the big para works perfect for me. It's tune, the bigger the para is, the more you can do with it. The smaller it is, it just becomes a light. And one of the guys who hires our studio a bit, that's, he's pretty much just shooting with the para. And he really struggled to get this look, which I would have simply got with just even a square softbox. And he really struggled to get the shadowing to work the same way because of the way it does that. Little dotties. Dotties things. Dotties. Well, you got but the video of you using the big one. Yeah, but yeah, I don't use the big one not because it's, it's more, it's more my commercial light. It's a lot of the time I use it for my commercial work, not my mm. own work. Mm? Mm. Mm. Orphan Black. I've heard that's a good show. I haven't watched it though. Orphan Black. Yeah. Was it a series? Yeah. I'll put it in my list of things to Your watch. List of things. Time to go to work. Peter and Beck. Oh, I guess I think they're probably going to work. They're going to work or we Maybe. need to go to work? No, I think they are because they're in Nashville, which would mean it's like, wait, no, because it would be like early hours in the morning then. Yeah, but he might have an early shift to do. It might be a seven hour drive to work. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh, oh, there was one before. I missed Ooh. it. I read it though. 
What determines which places you consider visiting slash living? Food, the scenery or the weather? Living? Her, it's food. Living? No, living. I could only live in Melbourne or New York. No, I say visiting. Visit, he said living or visiting. Oh. Living, I'm happy to hear, but visiting. Really? Now? I, I, well, I did just say I prefer. I, I could only live in Melbourne, New York, and Milan. I think you could do pretty well in Barcelona. Mm. Tapas mm. every day. Yeah. Nice weather. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, but for visiting, it's or well, determines where we go for work. It's we look at the de following. demand, uh, the following, and the demand of us to go there. But it's mostly the following. So. Like we go to LA and New York typically once a year because we've got a big following there. Um, I look at the YouTube. Well, we have a big following in other places, but it's, it's no what? good. It's no good for our workshops. Yeah, it's exactly. a different type of following. They're more an online following, not a hands-on following. But sometimes we don't know that until, until we, we, try <laughs> we try that. But um, but the set yeah. places in the world that we know, we always do well in the UK. We always do well in New York and LA. Um, Italy. Italy's always gone well. Paris is, I think it was just a bad, one bad year, but predominantly Paris has always been good for us. Mm. Um, whereas Berlin wasn't, and Canada was a bit of a struggle. Yeah, Canada has been, yeah. But we've got so many fans in Canada, but mm. to try and get them to come for a workshop or anything, they just won't know. Yeah cut firewood or just being they're <laughs> just too nice that's the problem they're just really nice they people they are really nice people the Canadians but yeah it's, it's, um, we do try and base it around food no m models Mod <laughs> food <laughs> Milan <laughs> for me for a holiday what, um, you for a holiday no what I'm trying to think oh. what I base it if I don't know it's well, maybe you know where you want to go on your holiday with Jared yeah well I want to go lots of places but I'm trying to think, what I don't know what I base it off. I think it's just, I want to go to Mexico. Oh, I don't really want to go to Mexico. I want to go to Mexico. I want to, yeah. drink, I want to eat tacos and drink margaritas and like lie on the beach and I stuff. I just want to drink tequila and stuff your margaritas. Why dilute really good alcohol? I love it. I don't want to stay in like King Coon though. I want to stay like somewhere a little bit more authentic, but not like so authentic that I'll get kidnapped by the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> like somewhere in between that is where I want to go in Mexico. I don't know where it is. And you'll be tra trafficked. <laughs> like that's, but you know what I mean? Like somewhere kind of authentic. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Um, <laughs> anyways. American um, Gods, I'll look that one up. That's just, I'll do Beck's job because, and with me with my dyslexia is quicker than what Beck's doing. <laughs> Would you ever do a critique video discussing and giving feedback to aspiring creators? I actually, we've always said no, and I'll explain why. Are you thinking of doing it? I am thinking of doing it, but Ooh. from a different angle. Okay. I'm going to get them to critique their own work. Oh. Fancy. All right, so if I, see the picture you see right now. So if this was a picture you took and then asked me to critique it, I don't know any of the story behind the picture or why you took it, why you used that colour palette, why you used that crop. Mm. I don't know anything about what you were trying to create. And I might say, just looking straight away at what I'm seeing in the video, that I'm a little bit dark, Beck's a little bit pale. <laughs> it's my uh, moon tan. I've, I've got a little bit of a magenta -y colouring in my thing, I'm a bit orange down my arms. The little highlights in the top of the lights are detracting me, they're dragging me off. The crop, I quite like the emptiness to one side, but then another photographer would say, yuck, I don't like that emptiness. So you followed, there's so many different ways. And then if you said, I was trying to create an image from this movie I saw, and mm. bang, it's a complete different picture now. Yeah. So for me to critique your work, I don't actually know what was going through your brain. but. I'm very seriously thinking about doing some critiquing because I know when I was starting, I wanted people to tell me, but then I didn't want them to tell me. Yeah. Because I was always upset. This was my favorite photo and you just ripped it to shreds. Now it's not my favorite photo anymore, which it still should be. But yeah. what I would rather do is 
instead of me critiquing your photo, making you critique your own photo and ask you questions about it and say, what would have you changed? What would have you done? Mm. And everybody should be doing this anyway with their photo, looking at the photo and say, how would I make this better? And once they finished ripping their own photo to shreds, they would either throw that photo in a rubbish bin or they'd say, yeah, no, I still like this, but I'm going to do another one and make it mm. so much better than this. I find a lot of the time when people ask for a critique, they just want you to tell them how, how good, good it, it is. I don't... I know people are looking for the smoke. I feel it. Like, I'm not saying that's all they're but doing. No, but I know there's certain people that yeah. are looking for the smoke. But I also feel that there is people out there that have come to our workshops and things like that that are lost. Yeah. But the problem is, is I can't make their photography better till they can see... What they need to In their own... Fix, they can yeah. see, or this... Not me say this. They can say, well, yeah, I would change this. I would change... And I'd say, well, there you go. So why are you asking me to critique your photo? You, mm. you should be critiquing your own work or putting it up against work that you want to be equal to. So I want to be shooting for Vogue, so I'm going to compare it to the late, all the Vogue photography. Yeah. And I'm going to sit it in a folder and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, why is my picture standing out so badly it's against this? Blending. Where's the problem? Hmm. Is it my lighting? Is it my editing? Is it my contrast? Yeah. Is it the story? Is it the model? Mm. Well, it's like we, we had a friend who started making music and he sent Jared one of his songs and was like, oh, like, let me know what you think of it. And Jared wrote back saying, hey, like, yeah, it was good, but I didn't really like this part. And I didn't like how you... Fix and he full on cracked it. And it's like... and Because he thought it was amazing and he thought it was the best. It's like, well, if you already think what you're doing is good, why do why you need you someone else to, to yeah. validate you? Like, if you think it's good, why do you need... That yeah. validation? I don't know. I, anyways. Yeah, artists, real artists don't look for validation. Yeah. They're actually saying, this is my image, like it or hate it. Yeah, but if you I'm are lost, changed. if you want like the critique you're because lost, you're lost, then that makes... I think, yeah, you need yeah. someone maybe, instead of them telling you what's wrong, it may, you know, someone maybe get you to open your eyes to what you've... Mm. Let you see where your problems are or help you see... What by asking questions, what don't you like in this picture? Hmm. So they can rather than looking at what they love in the picture, Start and we it, yeah. see this very much with um, our Facebook group when people post pictures, mm. and we'll go, yeah, I wouldn't have taken it from that angle. But I'm not gonna say or that. they're attracted to the model, not the photo. Yeah, that as well. Right. So as you're seeing something that's really obvious that. They just love this model's face and have gone goo goo gaga and not looking missed, at the rest. Yeah. Missed the whole idea of making her even better. Yep. You know, right, so she's pretty and you put ugly light on her. Yeah. But in your eyes, she's all pretty. She's all so pretty because you're, you're not just seeing what you've done to her. Got the rose tinted glasses. Yeah. Yes. The rose tinted glasses. <laughs> Yum. Where do we want to go after things open back up? Like everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> we want to go back to our old life. <laughs> Six one. months a year. Uh, we hated it. Quite it, six months. Oh, five months a year. Friggin' well, what's so including Australia? Mm. Although you know, maybe with you it's five months. With Rosie it's six weeks. We were doing all the I road shows like for Hasselblad and all of those as well, and that was two months in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Even four months a year traveling. Is he happy now? <laughs> I know it was longer because. I missed my dogs just because you didn't miss your Jared. I do miss him. Uh, where was I up to? Oh, I missed some because we were ranting. Um, time for bed. Boss of you giving away inspiration. Should visit the Pyrenees. Which? I don't know. Pyrenees. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what it is. I can't even spell. Sounds like perinase. Um, Perinay, mayonnaise. Um, it's yummy. Where are we up to? Do you do any street slash location photography? You don't do. You don't really do street. Isn't street taking photos of random people? No, there's a whole religion which is street photography, and I really, really like it. Mm. I, re I actually love it. 
but I am so shit at it <laughs> because I want expressions. I want to have capture expressions, whereas street, you're invisible. It's like you don't exist. Someone tried to take a photo of me and they missed her. I was walking across and then they like, and then after I crossed the road and I got there, they were like, oh, I just missed her. And they were all like bummed. This I looked really cool that day though. Massive. I, I, I don't know, most I get this story completely wrong, but there's someone bought a container of just stuff from someone who died. Mm. And in it was like a milk crate full of the person's life photography. So every day she didn't nanny. She went out and shot street on film. Mm. They are the most amazing photos ever. Mm. They leave some of the best street photographers for dead. She's died unknown. Mm. Complete, nobody even mm. knew the magic that she captured. And I saw some of these books are coming up for auction. They're auctioning off the photos. And seriously, capturing snapshots of moment in time. Mm. Perfect. I don't know. Do you see, have you seen my French thing that comes up in my Facebook? It says French something. A lot of it is 1950s through to maybe 1960s mm. street photography. And it's just simple, dumb things. You can just look at the picture forever. That's cool. A really, a really good skill. I'll keep an eye photo. out for it. Unfortunately, I've taken one street photography picture ever. Mm. Absolutely love it. Never shown it to anybody. I was waiting to do the lingerie shoot in Paris at oh, night time yeah. in the rain. I'm sitting there and there's a single guy sitting at the front of one of the restaurants. Nobody else there, just one chair and the rain is pouring and the light was supposed to snap that. And so, oh my God, this is like gold. And I've never shown anyone. No, I was going to say, I've never seen. No, I'm, sure. I'm saving it for sure. Oh. Sure, you can have it for when I die. My only one street photography. I'm curious now. It's like my U New York picture. That's pretty cool. My one and only mm. <laughs> landscape, uh, so cityscape photo. Awesome. Oh, we're words yeah. wise. I hope that answers what he wanted to hear. I think so. Joseph said they love the picture of me on your shirt, and then Stefan said it's funny. They're either looking at me when I speak or looking at me on your shirt when you're speaking. Back before COVID? Back after COVID? Hi. <laughs> Where's? I can distort you. It's really good. I can make you. The funniest <laughs> is if you like get rid of my nose and I just have like eyes and oh, a mouth. Oh, it just folds. <laughs> that was the funniest. That was lovely. So I don't know what that is. I look dumb. Um, and Stefan said to count them in on their critique concept of yours. So cool. yeah, well, we so. yeah. I was thinking about that. Is the thing I was thinking about <gasps> maybe the Zoom? Zoom for the Zoom. We're, we're, we're thinking because we're, well, I can't, at the moment I can't see an end to how the world is going at the moment. And Australia's worse because all our politicians are only, well, all our media is only picking up the worst from around the world. Yeah. Um, so it's brainwashing everyone in Australia to just have this negative where nothing's ever going to happen. So we're just looking more long term of things, ways that we can do more hands on without being hands on. Yes. Well, I don't know what we'll do. We'll figure something out. We're, we're, we're working on it. We only had a brief meeting about it today. And she hated everything I thought, but mm. now she's opening up a little bit. I didn't hate it. I was just playing devil's advocate and asking you questions. You haven't even watched the movie. So? It's on my list. I don't know what the word means. <laughs> but you use it. <laughs> ask another question before someone talks about shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> uh, does rain make things look more radiant? Oh, yeah. If you look at lots and lots of movies, uh, a lot of the time they'll wet down all the streets before they start shooting. It'll be a full sunny day, but the streets will still have this darker, darker yeah. bitumen, darker footpaths, the grass is greener. On the other side. Yeah, there's nothing... On the other side, yeah. The one, yeah, the best thing ever is if you can get somewhere like in a spring rain or a summer rain where you just get this really quick shower that wets everything down. And then it's sunny. And it's sunny. You'll get some of the best pictures ever. You get the steam coming off the con. I love it. I had that in, in Chicago's. We had that happen. But I was doing a filming for the other mob. Other mob. Oh, yes. That, and I couldn't just go out and shoot. I was stuck doing their stuff, and I really wanted to just grab the bottle and go out and shoot with the sting coming off the road. That would have been very cool. 
We're nearly at three hours, so right. we'll start wrapping we'll it start up. Wrapping up. Uh, but also, there's a documentary about that guy that bought the collection. Oh, is it? Can you can you please type it so we can put it in a link for other people to see and so I can watch it? <laughs> because there's another one in Australia. There's, they found some shots in Australia of someone's nobody's ever seen before, and these pictures are supposed to be to, to die for as well. Hmm. So. I'm trying to find that one as well. I like watching storage wars where people like try to bid on like storage containers and sometimes they get... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And Peter has to put up with all the time. <laughs> she also likes watching things about, what's it called? What? Not ghosting, the other word. Catfish. Catfishing. Catfish is so good. That is like the boringest... It's like that stupid thing, cheaters. It's all set up. Oh, it's all... So shit. you've actually... She's going to be a movie star because we were in a, a, a new TV... What do you call it? TV series? Even though, it's yeah, TV, it's TV series, series, yes. And Beck could not believe that reality TV was scripted. She's sitting what there going, I can't... I said, Beck, this is... She's we're in the you. middle of filming and all of a sudden they go, cut, 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 and run up to each of us and tell us, can we make it more... Can you be a bit more emotional? Can you be a bit more nasty? And Beck said, go... No, so it's not real. I, just, I knew it wasn't real. I just didn't know the extent. The extent. I didn't know now, how I was and Well, that was pretty mild. That was crazy. Nice. Seriously, that was mild because Gamble knows what she's doing and I knew what I was doing. But I watched them when they were doing the other people. It was like two minutes in. No, no, no. Cut, cut, cut. Start again. This is your first line. This is your line. I'm shook. You're shook. shook. I'm shaken. <laughs> not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Um... Peter, what about a remote shoot, like where you give instructions via a video chat? Like a remote Peter shoot with people you know slash trust in countries that do allow shoots? Like you're shooting and I'm giving advice from the from online? Answer, just, yeah, give us another answer if that's what you're meaning. One thing I was really interested in is I do, because of... My, I, I've got sort of two little side hobbies that I don't spend enough time doing. One of them's cooking, one of them sim racing. And on Twitch, one of the guys who does sim racing is a bit of a keen bass fisherman. And he went on Twitch and he went out fishing on Twitch. And I think he must have been using maybe the new Sony Expedia phone. Mm. So he was able to live stream off his phone and answer questions while he's fishing. I don't know how he set it up. He was completely on his own and it was friggin' awesome. Got it. Someone sent it. It's called, I'll put it in your... You put it in my thing. Which one is it in? It goes in... Oh, what are we talking about? The actual... The doco. The doco. You just put it in... It's movies and in music. Movies and music. Yeah. It's on Netflix. All right, cool. Um, and yeah, that, that was a... So it was, this was something I was thinking on the... What Beck and I were talking today and it's only because she used to go to clubs a fair bit with the side trans music and one of the promoters which bets oh, you're on a committee or something aren't you yeah. or, so they're that saturday night is it yeah. saturday night they've got a festival also a clubbing event happening with all these djs but it's on zoom. zoom so because i've never i've used zoom once and it was to do my car racing and it was a bit useless when we used it I was trying to see, is there a way that we could have an interactive, so with YouTube, it's a bit hard to be interactive. So we can't see you. Yeah. You can't put your hand up and say, I've got a question and everybody else hears you talk and hears me. And that, so I'm trying to find a way that we could either be in our studio and doing things and then like we're doing a workshop, lots of people, we have our workshops, aren't you sitting in chairs? That anyone who hasn't been to one of my workshops, it's normally small, 10 people max, and we're all around. Yeah. And they're standing next to me and saying, but why did you... And everyone can talk like this, and there's so much better learning. Yeah. And we're sort of trying to work out a way we can do that. Online. Online, but we're trying, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle yet. Oh, we're right. working on we it. We can chat about it tomorrow some more. We'll yep. come up with some little concepts for you guys. <sighs> yes, so thank you guys for letting us know that it is Finding Vivian Mayer. So I put that in Peter's cool. list. Yep. And you'll need to watch this. You'll absolutely really like this. Yeah. No, you'll yeah, really like it. Really it's like. your kettle of fish. My kettle of fish. Yeah, it's My kettle some, of anchovies. It's got some anchovies in there. <laughs> no, no olives. 
Um, so we done over uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Yeah, I don't know much about Microsoft Teams, but I use Zoom quite a bit to talk to my friends. So we'll look into it and we'll come up with something and we'll yeah, let you guys know. See if all this stuff is, is hard. Like even if you could see the stuff that's sitting on this bench, just to have a lot of a semi-professional thing. I We've got one, two, thing three, down. four, five, six, seven, eight items mm -hmm. and then linked into two different computers. It's and it's, it was a head mess up for you in the start, wasn't it? Even to, uh, today I was fine with like I kinda know what I'm doing now, but I still was just Yeah, like, it's still such a doing stuff live becomes hard and then to do the other way back, well your computer just died hard, what'd you do? No, my Wi Fi is oh, Your Wi Fi's going. Well, yours isn't, thank God, because yours is the one streaming. Uh, we should be going, going, no, it's we should be going. Right, So where we get to? It's down the bottom. Yeah, and I think we're caught up to everything. All right, well, cool. we might head off then, yeah, guys, because it's 9 o'clock and I need to go home and go to bed. Get a beauty sleep because she has to work tomorrow. I've got to look at her tomorrow for work. <laughs> Not shooting, we're editing. Um, <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, That's cool. That's fine. Um, thank you thank for you. putting up with us just being idiots <laughs> and doing nothing, not this much. Um, we only do going to do these maybe once, once a month. month because, yeah. We don't want to oversaturate it. And don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like of fun. A, yeah, it's like a little special thing once a month. Except well, they, this time only it's once every two months. This time? Is no, it? we do our... Oh, yeah, because the, like, the next month will be in the morning. In the morning, which is America. more America time. And, and this one's more for your time. Your, your time. Yeah. But anyways, thank you guys for joining us and talking to us. And if We've I missed your question, sorry. And we've got new YouTubes coming up new early YouTube's. next week, a couple of good ones. And provided we get out of lockdown, if you're in Melbourne and you know of any models who want some training, we're also going to be holding a model training workshop. Yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah we well, haven't actually, really advertised. Haven't we really haven't advertised, advertised it yet, but we're actually going to do, instead of a photographer's workshop, we're doing a model. model's workshop. So if you're in Melbourne and I don't know if any models are watching us now, but if you're a photographer in Melbourne and you know of any models who might benefit from it and you want to let them know, um, the details of it are on the workshop's website. So pass that on to them and I'll be advertising it soon. So we'll see how it goes. And if no one's interested, then we won't run it. But <laughs> we've got feedback from models saying that they'd be interested. So, so we decided to do it. We'll see. Yeah. I think it'll go well. We'll make it go well. We'll make it go well. It'll be awesome. Otherwise, we'll just, we could get a whole heap of men. Make them look silly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Catch and ya. see you next time. Where's the end button? Where's the end button next to the <laughs>